violence faite aux femmes, c'est pas un accident. Oh no, there's an ad playing. Everybody, everybody. Ah, don't panic. Sorry. French ads. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, back to normal. Don't worry about it. I think they were advertising a movie. I'm not sure. I didn't listen. <laughs> All right, let me get my coffee and we are going into space. I don't know if astronauts drink coffee into space, but I sure as hell am. Mm. Be right back. Give me a minute and we're ready. I'm so excited. Testing, testing three, two, one. I just realized we are going to space and I do not have the little walkie talkie to be like, mother, mother to honey bunny, mother to honey bunny, three, two, one, lifting off, mother to honey bunny going once, mother to honey bunny going twice. We're off to space. Good morning, everyone. Hello. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a great night. I hope you're exciting. So this is what the tweet is all about. Fia, we are in Spassy Week. This week is space. How is everybody today, huh? Yeah, I just realized, I'm sorry. I don't have a funny little voice machine to make me have a funny voice. So instead, I'll just make my voice funny, okay? Commander Mom, Commander Mom, incoming to Honey. Honey, Honey, can you hear me? Ground control to Major Mom. Hello, USNY. Thank you so much for the soup. Hello, hello, hello. Commander Mom can hear you. Commander Mom, ready to lift off. Um, Yeah, I'm just excited. I'm ready. I'm excited. I am going to space this week. Very many space. So space. Who's ready to space, huh? I have a space helmet and my ears are poking out. Listen, you try finding a helmet with your ear where your ears can be covered. Show me a helmet that will let my ears go through. Hmm? Hmm? This is ground control. Wedding you wowed and queel. Oh, uh, psh. Hello, honey. This is Major Mom. God Emperor of the stream. Hello, hello. I wish to know where my people come from and dive into the space. I wish to be Kerbal Space Program. I will be using my theoretical degree in astro... Wait. Aerospace Engineering to go into aerospace. I forgot what my theoretical degree is in. Hold on. Is my theoretical degree in aerospace... Oh, Theoretical Aerospace Engineer. There we go. Okay, I have to remember, I'm a theoretical aerospace engineer. I have a theoretical degree in astrophysics, and I have a theoretical degree in... What else? Rocket building. There we go. There we go. Let's go. 
Thank you for the super. Oh my goodness, Mr. Yura. She's a rocket mom, rocking up. Ring out her fuse up here alone. She's a rocket mom, rocket mom. Boo, 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 doo, doo. And she's flying off to space. But I want to say all by myself, but it's not true. You're flying with me. Look, look, you're flying with me. Are you excited? Are you excited to be flown into space? Hmm? 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 Thank you so much for the super. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Lauren, thank you for the super. Hello, Nina. I just want to say my friend recently got a gray Shiba Inu puppy. I am jelly. Those puppies look so freaking cute. I did hear they're not super fussy, but they need a lot of exercise. Like way less than a husky, but those ones still need a lot of exercise. And they're little cranky babies. They make a lot of noise and they make funny little faces. She's the most precious little chunk in the world. And he's a fan of yours and has called her Nina. Yes. More Ninas in the world is more good. Nina in Spassi, God help us. God can help you here, baby. <laughs> I'm coming for your God. Remember the other day we talked about having communion in space? Wait. I am going to commit Godicide? Can I say that? There's fratricide, which is when you kill your brother. I don't have a brother. Maybe God is my brother right patricide is when you kill your father i don't have a father maybe god is my father day side there we go i'm coming for you god i'm coming for you allegedly for entertainment purposes only <laughs> if my stream somehow crashes today and um yeah if my stream crashes and and i'm not streaming anymore it's god by the way it's God punishing me. If anything happens like that today, you know for a fact that God has decided to punish me. I'm just letting you all know. If anything happens, it's God's fault. Blame God. This is 2023. I am tired of blaming our parents. We need to start blaming God. Okay? When's the last time you blamed God for your problems? Just not me, please. Um, what do you think is worse? Do you think it's worse to threaten to kill God or do you think it's worse to pretend to be God where do you think oh my god hold on it's not even a full screen game hello hello okay graphics hold on hold on everybody 1280 um nor nor apply okay give me a minute did I did I check if my game was was streaming before this Definitely, totally, 100 million percent. 100 million percent, I triple checked Kerbal. Uh, capture specific window. Kerbal space program. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. They say Kayla is the first Klingon kill the gods that created him. Oh my god. That's gotta be me. Niels, I have every physics equation in my head. Wait, am I gonna physics in this game? What do I need? You remember when you go to school, right? And they give you a really crazy physical formula, physics formula. And you think to yourself, I will never ever use it in my life ever again. Are you telling me I was supposed to memorize those? Oh no! This is actual rocket science. Shit. Well, it's a good thing I am a theoretical rocket scientist. Shish. This is applied physics? I'm a fox! I didn't graduate high school! Foxes don't go to school. Damn it. It's fine. It's okay. I can do it. I can do it. I can have. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Isn't physics just a bunch of theories anyway, right? You just go, I have a theory if I put wings on my spaceship that it won't crash. And then you send it off and then it dies and crashes. And you go, oops, my theory was wrong. Let's try it again. I have a theory. If I added a, an extra pilot in the plane, it has less chances of crushing, crashing. Right? Applicable theory. 
I am applying my theory. Oh my god. I am excited. Look at them. Look at my space crew. They don't even know death is coming yet. <laughs> Look at these little buggers. They don't even know that they are going straight into their death. Tag yourself. I'm the one that's upside down that I'm covering. You can't see it. Have you done the tutorial? I have done nothing and I have seen nothing in this game and I'm excited. Uh, Pickle Ginger, thank you so much for the soup. I didn't know you're so educated, Nina. That's so cool. How did aerospace classes go for you? I've been thinking about it. Uh, well, Pickled Gengar, um, I did my space engineer degree during quarantine. So, um, you could say this is my first time. Yeah. <laughs> it went great. I'm having a great time. Uh, Zoe, thank you so much for the soup. I recommend career or science mode. Do not go into sand mode. Career has missions that act as a tutorial. All right. We are making it a, we are making it a career. Camille, thank you for the soup. And thank you again, Zoe. I have a lot of hours on that game and I can say you're going to have a blast playing it. If you have the patience to learn the game mechanics. I'm trying to think what's the game that I've learned that's been the most kind of I mean, I got to learn RimWorld, which isn't that hard. I got to learn um, Crusader Kings, which isn't that, that hard. But we'll see. Maybe this game is the game that will challenge me and the game that will get me to... Yeah. We'll see. I'm, I'm waiting for Dwarf Fortress. I want to make sure I play Dwarf Fortress on stream. And I can't do it on stream just yet. For reasons I cannot get into. This is literally rocket science. Hey. As a rocket scientist. Let's go. Start game. Oh. Look at him. He's me. Resume saved. Wait. I don't have a saved file. I just downloaded the game. Okay. <laughs> Took me a second. I was like, oh no. They're gonna know I've been cheating. Um, Save name. Nina... Nani Kusa goes to space. Career mode. In career mo mode, you have to manage all aspects of your space program. Funds, reputation, and science are all active. Contracts are available at Mission Control. Isaac, how have you been with the, with the hangover? Check advanced tweakables in the settings. Do the tutorials first. Somebody told me career mode gives me tutorials. Hello, feminine parental figure. Hello, darling. Don't do career. You want me to do training first? Fine. Fine. Hold on. Let me open my window because I'm getting a little hot. Space is getting me all hot. Hot and we're drunk. Sorry. Space is making me a little hot. Maybe it's my shirt. I don't know. I don't know why space has been making me so hot. Oh. I think career is fine without training. Uh, I don't think I need training just because I have a whole chat full of lovely, lovely mini space engineers. But okay, let's do training. Getting started at basic controls. This tutorial presented by famous rocket scientist Wenner Kerman covers the basics of rockets construction in the vehicle assembly building. He's waiting for you down there in his Always high in demand. <sighs> I'm ready. Can you trust chat? Of course. Welcome to today's lecture on Vessel Constructor. I'm Kerman. Whatever you want to put a satellite in orbit, make a transcontinental flight, or step onto the very surface of the moon. you're going to need to build yourself a ship. It should be pretty easy, even when you're not a famous rocket scientist like myself. In this tutorial, I will show you around the Kerbal Space Center, then take you to the Vehicle Assembly Building, where you'll learn how to construct a simple ship. Each step, blah, 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 back button, uh, is home pinnacle of Kerbal Endeavors and Achievement Space Exploration Facilities. You will be able to manage space, create rockets, track, find out each facilities. You can hover your mouse. Okay. Take some time to hover. Launch pad. Take it off. Three, two, one. Build that the VAB are launched. We are reasonably confident. It's at a safe enough distance from everything else. Interesting. At the tracking station, all ongoing missions can be viewed and focused here. Landed craft can be recovered. Interesting. 
Administration building may not seem like a very excited place where all our strategic decisions are made. Astronaut complex contains the living and recreation spaces for all our crew members. Okay, and new applicants. So this is mission check. This is your... No, this is your current mission check. This is your strategic decision. So probably like how to upgrade stuff. We'll see. This is where your people live and where you could more. Space plane hangar. Allows construction of spacecraft. Okay, this is where your ship lands. Um, and where you upgraded. Mission control. All available contracts can be managed. Also offers a very nice view of the launch site. Ooh. Vehicle assembly building. Vab where the spacecraft are designed and built. Okay, wait. Oh. So, space plane hangar is the same as vehicle assembly building? Administration building is basically useless. All right. The whole week is space themed. Is that a coincidence? Yes. It's a random coincidental occurrence that I decided to play only space games this week. And I have only space everything. Ooh, okay, the hangar makes airplanes. Okay, okay, okay. And this makes... Okay, cool. Captain Kosaka's status report. O2 sensors on. Greg, thank you for the super. There is no oxygen in space. I am ready for death. Okay, cool. I have moused the buttons. Oh, everything's locked. Um, sir? Vehicle. All right, I'm just going to touch everything. Oh, my God. Inside the VAB. Very good. What you see in the middle of the screen in the construction area, this is where parts are placed and your craft is constructed. On the left side of the screen is the parts toolbox. Oh. Coupling. <laughs> Aerodynamics, ground, thermal, electric. Oh my god. My brain already hurts and we haven't even started. If you want your craft to be controllable, you need a command module. It's the best to make it the first part of your pl part you place. This part will either contain some plucky Kerbal crew or an automated pilot mechanism. Okay, pods tab. Oh my god. MK1 Command Pod. Oh my god. Plus Messenger Mass. Originally built as a placeholder. Alright, we're doing it. After at least one part is placed, you can look around with the following controls. Orbit the camera with the arrow keys or mouse drag. Ah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Today's stream might be... A oh, look at the little guys! I am now realizing the gravity of today's stream and how much reading I'm going to have to do. Crazy Cappy, you're asking the real questions. You're asking the real questions. A. Do I have space insurance? Do you have space insurance? Look at this little guy. Look at him. Look at him. What is he doing? He's slacking off. Look at this little man. Look at this little guy running. Why are you running? Oh my god. Why is there a little car? This is the cutest thing ever. If you'd like your pilot to be able to make more than one flight, he or she will have to return safely to the ground. I mean, do they need to? Can we just get new people every time? What if there's an overpopulation thing on this planet and we could just send people into space, into other planets, no? Hold on, I want to make... Okay, am I just really old or is this text really small? I think I'm both really old, but this text is really small. I got to make it bigger. Look at this. I have to... I have to scrunch. I have to scrunch. The road to space is paved with dead Kerbals and good intentions. It's okay, I'm going to make the text bigger after this. Press E escape. No, no, it doesn't help. I'll do it after I read this, I promise. He, okay, I have to get closer. Um, found on the utility tab. Changes tabs by clicking the icon. Okay, utility. Oh, wait, parachutes are a simple way. Found on the utility tab. Utility. Ah, oh, there we go. 
MK16 parachute might be considered by some to be little more than a random stitching together of some of the surplus parts of it is, in fact, made from. But the fact remains that the MK16 has been widely accepted as a generally better alternative than being in free fall. Wow. Wow. Little parachute. When you're choosing parts, you can view the details of available parts. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. Some parts, like our parachute here, have configurable options. To see these, we need to right click on the parachute. See the available parameters. On the parachute, you will see that we can adjust your altitude and the atmospheric pressure at which to open. Okay. For now, let's check that the opening height on the parachute is at least a thousand. Okay. Because safety is important. Move it a bit to 0 0.2. Okay. I don't know what this... Wait. Oh, 0 0.2. I know how to math. Perfect. You can hide these options right clicking. Okay. Next up, we're going to need something to make us go. Click on engines. Look at me. I am basically a scientist at this point. Oh. Look at that. I am science. Look at this. Already, I have three things built. Oh, I forgot you're just starting out. You're not a famous rocket scientist. And to make that craft survivable as it stands now, you'd have to be better at rocket science than me. <laughs> Impossible. The problem with that craft is that this solid rocket is too powerful for the payload. What? What? A single small pot and shoot. It will either burn up on ascent from going too fast or burn up coming back down. As long as it burns coming down, I'm okay with this. It is a risk I am willing to take in the name of progress. Even if you survive that, the craft's mass will cause it to fall too fast for the parachute to operate properly. Why can't we add just another parachute? Asking the real questions here. I promise to teach you how to change that to make it work in a later tutorial. Why not teach me now? Okay, we're gonna get the thumper. Pick up the back... Pick up the back thumper. What does that mean? Okay. Either... Drop it back over the parts toolbox. So like this. Okay, one second, everybody. Pick up the back thumper. What does that mean? Which part is it? Yeah, as long as we get out of here, get the... Is it this, this guy? Just grab the engine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Which one was the engine? The long one. Perfect. Um, where do we want to put it? Either drop it back over tools or press delete. Oh, I knew that. I can read. Instead, let's add solid water. That's a better match. At the start of your career, I will have to consider rubbish parts. Literally, the motor here looks like it may be converted trash can. That said, it does not have enough oomph to get this little craft moving. Okay. Okay. I got this little fuel booster. <laughs> what, Greg? I can drink in space? Who said I can't have alcohol in space? I'm bringing my bottle of wine and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Starless, thank you so, so much for the gifted memes. And thank you so much, Greg, for the soup. Uh, I will bring alcohol to space. Nothing can stop me, not NASA, not God. Nice one. We've built the simplest survivable craft possible. That's it? Just these three? You could go and launch this right now, but it might be safer to explain one other thing. In the bottom right, you see the staging stack. It is the bo- Oh, wait. I'm going to be covering the bottom right. Let me move myself a tiny little bit. Don't worry about it. We're fine. We're fine. Don't worry about it. Perfect. Now you can see everything. Oh, I guess I can move you a little bit as well. So that way you also don't cover things up for yourself. Yay! Even Roscoe Smalls doesn't like alcohol in space. Why not? What's wrong? Seeing you play the game that inspired me to get into STEM and graduate with an applied physics degree last year makes me so happy. Hope you have fun. Rambo, thank you. Listen, you with your non-theoretical degree in applied physics, me with my theoretical degree in applied physics, together, you know, making good streams. 
Mom to take Venus to prove, prove Greece wrong about who the goddess of beauty is. Baby, thank you for the Luva. And seriously, that's awesome that this is the game that got you. Okay, I kind of want to know. You don't have to tell me your degrees or your jobs, everybody, but did a video game inspire you to get into your job slash degree? I guess even more so if the video game inspired you to be a video game designer. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. What, what field? You don't have to tell me your exact, exact job, but what field? Currently graduating in spacecraft engineering. This game is too realistic sometimes. Oh my God. You got into finance from management games. I just imagine you, Jim, playing a ton of like idle management, just being like, okay, cute girls making money. Cute girls making money. I must be a cute girl making money. Video games help me learn English. Oh, I've heard that a lot. I work as an FQA senior tester. Video games have set me for this. Oh my goodness. IT programming in general, theoretical physics. <laughs> games are part of the reason I got into software. Software. Sorry, I can't pronounce today. I didn't follow through with it, but I know Ace Attorney inspired me to learn law. Mm, that's awesome. I mean, you didn't follow through with it, but we still love you, baby. My computer science degree to become a game designer. Love that for you. EU4 is the gateway to a history degree. Only a little medicine. I just imagine you playing um, <laughs> RimWorld and freaking like taking out people's kidneys and hearts and giving them peg legs and being like, hmm, this has prepared me for a career in medicine. <laughs> I love that a fish scientist. I love that. That makes sense, Ruru. You went to college for medical mechanical engineering because of Dead Space. That is I love that you played Dead Space. You've killed aliens in space and you're like, "You know what I would like to do? Make spaceships with better mechanics." <laughs> so that hopefully when Dead Space happens, I could be on Earth dead. Games inspired me to be an artist. Now I'm unemployed, broke, and unsatisfied by my own art. Super. Hey. <laughs> it could be worse. You could be in dead space being the little man. You, you could be Isaac in the dead space. Thank you so much, Falano. I'm sorry you're not happy right now, baby. Watching Jackie Chan movies helping get into learning and teaching Kung Fu. Ooh, I love that. All the bad guys in kids' show got me into crime. Hey. Hey. Someone's got to be a criminal, right? You and me both. Someone's got to be the crimer. Someone's got to do it. If it's not going to be you, if it's not going to be me, who else is going to do it? What do you mean suing got you into space thermal tech? What? Raven, that's awesome. Nina Kosaka got me into crime. Remember that. When you are arrested... For your crimes, remember to tell them my Oshi Nina Kosaka got me to start on my life of crime. Oh, J Man. That's kind of crazy. Breaking Bat turns me into. <clears throat> Super Mario inspired me to become a plumber. I was greatly disappointed. Yeah, I'm 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 not surprised. There's probably a little bit more shit than you expected, huh? <laughs> probably a little bit shittier of a job than you thought. Gaming lead to wanting to make servers stable. I love that. You probably gamed so much as a, as a younger you with unstable servers and thought, you know what? When I grow up, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix all of this BS. All right, everybody. Back to the game. Ah. GTA inspired me to dot, 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 dot. Don't, don't say it. Don't go there. Don't say it. In the bottom right, you will see the staging stack. It is the box with the number zero and the icons for the parachute and engine with it. The stack shows us which parts will be activated as we stage our rocket. Reset it shows that when we activate the next stage, both the engine and the parachute will be triggered where it could be considered funny to open the chute and fire the motor at the same time. It's not going to give you much of a flight. To fix, we need to separate the engine and the chute into two stages. So if you mouse over the O stage, you will see a little plus and minus appear. Oh my god. 
I'm already overwhelmed with information. I'm excited. Click the plus button to add a new stage. Okay. I get it. So plus one stage. Okay. And then can I... If you mouse over the zero stage, you will see a little plus appear. Okay. If you... Click plus to add a new stage. Make sure precisely two stages. All right, let's add two stages and then. Thrust, burn. Okay, so basically. He wants me to see when I'm going into space. I, I know the stage thing. I, I know what he means by that. Good. <laughs> we're we're getting there. Now we have three stages. Oh, because zero counts like a stage. I knew that. I was just testing you. I was just testing. I was seeing if you were paying attention and you passed the test. Thank you. Um, Evil Crash, thank you so, so much for the Supa. Hello, this is <clears throat> Mr. Lawyer. Please understand we all all references to foxes in the stars. I'm not even in the stars. I'm still on Earth. Or this game's Earth. Thank you. Excellent. It's important to note that the stages activate from the highest number and then count down. So the first stage will be stage one and the second stage will be stage two. Okay, so. Stage one, the engine. Stage two, the parachute. I am an engineer. That's it. We now have a safe, well, relatively safe craft that's ready to go. Let's make sure that if we need this design again, we don't have to build it all from scratch. At the top screen, you will see the name of your craft. Um, Ninor's first spicy ship. Cool. Um, when you use the load screens later, these names and descriptions will help you grab the wrap vessel. If you're happy with the name, click on the save icon in the upper right. Ah, la, la, la. Oh my god, we did it. We did it! Time for Star Fox. Thank you, baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excellent work. Feel free to play around with the parts. Okay. Um, I want to make my text bigger because this game's text is too small. This game's text is too small. I'm a little too old for all of this. It's a little too small. I'm a little too old. And I already have to scrunch my eyes. Cool. That was awesome. Let me make my text bigger. <laughs> Let me change everything. Settings. Graphics, right? General. Fox Mom Engineer in Space again? What do you mean again? It's my first time. Is it UI? Whoa. <laughs> Have you ever looked at an old person's phone and everything, all the letters are like this? Yep, that's me right now. That's me right now. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Moon ot bust. Yes, love that for me. Uh, also, Greg, thank you for the super. And Misa, thank you for the super. Learn the basics of flight. Oh, this is so much better. This is so much better. Samantha, I'm sure my first rocket will fly amazingly, okay? I'm sure of it. Also, Tequila, thank you for the super. It's going good. I'm still... Honestly, what? Are you kidding me? Why is there so much tutorial? Why is there so much tutorial? I am but a silly, goofy little space fox. I don't have the brain capacity for this. Houston to Nina. Good afternoon. Shh. Good afternoon, Marco. Good afternoon, Nina. Going off into space. This is literally rocket science, mom. <laughs> I have a degree in this shit. I went to Fox Flight School. I went to Fox Flight School in my imagination. Okay. A theoretical degree. Yeah. Which is the same. That's a good idea, actually, somebody just said. Uh, Zovi said to do the first four or five 
and then get into career mode. When would you say I can get into career mode? And then maybe I can come back and do a few more. Also, give me just a minute. I'm getting really, really warm in space. I want to I wanna change. Volkoman, thank you so much for the memberships. Thank you. I am wearing a very hot space suit and I need to change my hot space suit. I am way too hot to go into space right now. Give me just a minute, okay? I'm sorry. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Hello, Major Mom? Major Mom to stream. I am wearing shorts because in space, nobody knows that you're wearing shorts. So here I am. <laughs> Thank you, Strategia. Okay. Let's go until Science Basics and then we are going to start the game. Is that cool with everybody? Is that okay with everyone? I just really, really want to play the game. Okay, I am wearing short shorts and nobody knows because I will be in space in my little space suit. All right. Oogie, oogie, mom, oogie. Thank you, everybody, for the supas. Thank you for spoiling me. Also, Hira, thank you for joining the membership. Namusan, mommy, why are you doing the tutorial? We all know that true space engineers just do trial and error. Very, very true. And I, as the truest space engineer, I'm going to do both the tutorial and trust the process. You don't have the brain capacity for now, but you will develop with overtime messing with the game. Thank you. I will. I will. I have the desire. I have the technology. Let's go. Let's start the basics of flight. Mm? She wears short shorts. She wears space suit. What the hell am I looking at? I'm so overwhelmed. Welcome to the Kerbal Space Center launch facility. I'm a Gene Kerman. Oh, I'm Gene Kerman, and I will teach you the basics of piloting. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> I have made a mistake. Pitch, yaw, roll are the three directions you will rotate. Oh my God, look at the little pilot man. Look at the little pilot man. Okay, I might have to roll it back, right? Aha, you're a curious one, aren't you? The IVA button over each crew member's portrait will let you see this ship from his own perspective. Oh, it's a pilot woman. Oh, I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Valentina. I'm sorry, Valentina. Know that in this mode, your flight UI has less instruments since most of them can be found in the cockpit. Uh, I'm sitting in the middle of the cockpit. I'm lost in my thoughts and I'm sitting and releasing all my talks since 
center of the scene, make you bow down on your knees. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. In the cold, don't feel it anymore. But I know there's love waiting at the door. Mm -hmm. But for now, I'm stuck in the tutorial. You can look around without having to hold down the mouse button. Try looking around and clicking on things. <laughs> <laughs> the engineering department says that there are many devices in here that actually work. There are multiple crews you can cycle the POV using the V key. Okay, 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 let's click everything. I got permission to click. You don't need permission to dance, but you need permission to click. Hey! He lied to me! There's nothing clickable here. This little guy. Okay. Yaw is to the left. Pitch is to the right. And roll is to the front. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't really understand. But let's just continue. Mm -hmm. You control your ship's rotation using these controls. S, W, A, D, and Q, E. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. SW, pitch up and down. AD, pitch left. And, oh my god. Throttle plus pitch, yaw, and roll are the main controls you need to master for a successful crash free flight. We'll skip all of the throttle control. From launch to the final deployment, you can control the activation of several ship's parts. Space launch, activate next stage. Notice the stage indicator in the lower left corner. It shows the current active stage. Since we haven't launched yet, it's showing the first stage is active. I have your staging controls locked for now, so the stage indicator is glowing purple. Oh my god. The nav ball. An important part of flying is knowing how your ship is oriented and where it's going. That's why a good pilot is always aware of the ship's altitude, where it's pointing, and its velocity vector, where it's going. These aren't always the same directions, and as your skills improve, you should pick up on these. <laughs> it is at this moment Fox Mom knew she made a grave mistake. <sighs> Look how cute Valentina is at the bottom. Here you can see the ship's nose in relation to the horizon. Top center part of the screen, have your altimeter, vertical speed indicator. <laughs> how quickly your altitude is changing when launching is considered the best to keep things gauge pointing up. Atmosphere gauge indicate how deep the ship is in the planet atmosphere. One last thing before we give this rocket in the staging stack, you'll see the indicator shows the chute will be activated by staging. You already know that. Um, but it will change the background to indicate safe stage to parachute. Note, however, that by default, parachutes will not deploy when unsafe, even if you stage them. The left three shows safety. Safe, risky, and unsafe to deploy. The chute is unstage white in the left three. The right three shows stage after staging. Armed, deployed, and cut shredded. Anytime you may press escape to pause the game, pause menu for now, get yourself prepared and hit space when ready to launch. Oh! Am I doing it? Sorry, Valentina. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Poor Valentina's gonna die. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> okay. Oh, let, let's let's let's. Let, okay. Wait, wait, how do I fix this? Valentina looks like she's having a great time. I came in like a wrecking ball. I never hit so hard in love. Honestly, <laughs> that made me want to puke a little bit. All right, um, how do I activate my parachute? 
I shoot at for more. Oh, I hope that wasn't too soon. I will figure it out. Right? That's just space bar and then it auto does everything. Oh, please, please survive. Oh my God. I am space mom. If this is not the best thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Valentina's a lie. <laughs> no way she survived. <laughs> you didn't leave the atmosphere. Um, mm -hmm. But the important thing is everyone's alive, right? You can point the mouse just above the altimeter and click the recover button. I've also unlocked a new hatch. I want to see if we can actually get her into space this time. Recover vessel. Hold on. Okay, now that we're in the zero. Okay, so now that we're done, the space chute's deployed. Okay, okay, okay. So I would need to basically refit this vessel. Okay, now that this happened, you basically need to go back and like refit it. You need to like get the new parachute in in phase two, right? You'd basically need to like put this in, but get the new parachute. Because this one right now is like red, so it's not deployed. You do need a new rocket. You can't just reuse your rocket, right? You got KSP at 10 years old when he had zero tutorials. Now you're in engineering uni, 400 hours playing it and watching Fox Mom learn to struggle like I once did. Wait a second. You're telling me that since the age of 10 to university, you've only played this game for 400 hours? That's rookie numbers, baby. That's rookie numbers. That is rookie numbers. Absolute rookie numbers. Absolutely rookie numbers, baby. How could you? How could you? I'm about to do 400 hours this week. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. But seriously, that's awesome. Congratulations. Samantha, thank you for the super. It sounds kind of complicated, but as you do it, you'll get used to it. Oh, I'm sure it's the same. It was the same thing with Crusader Kings in any game. Games that overload you with information seem really, really scary at first. But then as you keep playing, you're like, oh, all of this makes sense. Okay. Let's do intermediate construction. I get it. I launched the thing, I pressed space bar, I hope for the best. Hello again, glad you could come back. To get started, go ahead and enter the VAB. I love to VAB. Here we are again now to business. If you remember in our last construction tutorial, yes, 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 yes. Loading saved designs. Click on open. Button in the top right corner. Hopper. Perfect. If you mess up, you can recreate the craft. Okay. Um, then remove its RT5 flea motor. Okay, that's the motor. Yeah, motor. I'm sorry I'm saying it kind of weird. I don't mean to be saying it so weird. Wait. This is the command. Okay, this is where the little guy sits. This is the parachute. And this is the engine, right? So the motor is this guy. Because this is the engine. Right? The leap key. Perfect. KSP taught me more about orbital mechanics than school ever did. Uza, thank you for the soup, but thank you, thank you. Kerbal can also appear in Stellaris as an early spaceflight civilization. Mitsuka, I have to play Stellaris next. It's called a motor, not an engine. Okay. Unlike last time, we won't bring bringing up the whole vessel back. We, so we can change our parachute stats from what we used before. Right-click on the parachute to... Okay, wait, wait, wait one second. To verify... Where's my spacecraft? Oh. <laughs> this is going great, as you can tell. I'm, I'm starting off amazing. Right-click on the parachute and verify that its deployment altitude is set to 1,000. 
but set the minimum pressure slider all the way to 0.75. Hey, whatever you want me to do. That corresponds to an altitude on Kerbin of about two kilometers. That means a much shorter time hanging around during the scent. I don't understand, but that is okay. First off, let's change the name of our craft. Ninor's first ship. Great, for this craft, we're going to give the ship some additional purposes by attaching a science experiment. We can run these experiments during our travels and get valuable science data for Kerbal Kind. There are a number of science experiments to be performed, but at the moment, we only have Mystery Goo Containment Unit available. Switch to the Science tab to look at it. Okay. This is one of the most basic science experiments. Oh, I have to make the thing smaller because look, it's too big at the at the bottom. Hold on, I will find this. Tools, engineers report, alarm clock messages at the left. Center of thrust, center of overlay, toggle snap. Above the utility tab. Cargo, science. I got it. I got it. Mystery goo containment unit. This unit was something one of our engineers came up upon dumpster diving <clears throat> while researching alternatives application for existing technology. It's a sealed container which appears to be filled with a strange looking substance. We couldn't reach in or break the canister open, but watching how the goo, 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 goo behaves when subjected to different situations could be very educational. Unknowingly Derpy, thank you for the soup, but you and everybody else, everyone's been saying that this game taught them more about space than space ever taught them about everything. I love being covered in science. That is basically it. This is a cargo part that can be placed inside inventories. When you pick up the part, you will see that it's designed to attach to the sides of other parts, i.e. Rad radially. Why did I think it said radically? If we attach only one of those, then during our flight, our craft will be in balance. Only way to solve this is to add an extra goo container on the opposite side of the rocket so they balance. Luckily, we have a symmetry tool to help. This is a toggle snap. These buttons control symmetry highlighted. Ankle snapping can be found in the lower left of the screen. Pressing the symmetry button to cycle through the available symmetry nodes. Set this to times two, then pick up and place a mystery goo containment unit on the side of the pod near the top. You'll notice that a second one has been placed opposite the first by the symmetry tool. Okay. Parent, tool, radial, okay. Radial symmetry around vessel. Radial symmetry around parent part. And then there's this guy. Circle symmetry. And then there's this guy, toggle snap. Okay. Let me reread. I did not understand anything for a second. Hold on. Let me actually reread. Nothing makes sense. I understand putting the extra thing, but these buttons control symmetry and angle snaps. Okay. Press symmetry button or press the X key to cycle through available symmetry modes. Okay. Cool. Set this to times two. So like this, maybe? And then pick up a place, a mystery. So this is kind of what it looks like. Basically, I want it to, right? Oh, okay. So yeah, I, if I want to, this in my head, this is how it should work. This is how it should look. Um, and place a mystery containment goo on the side of the pod. I don't think it did that. I don't think it worked. I'll get it when I use it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's it. Um, Remember the place the canister is near the nose. Oh, oopsies. That's why it didn't do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the best. I am the best. I am the best of the best. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Wow. Wanna Ooh. It's a lot of canisters. 
and they're kissing. All right, nice, awesome. I am space, basically. From this moment on, I am space mom. Rocket science is super easy. Near the nose of the pod. Why won't you let me place them near the nose of the pod? What am I doing wrong is my question. Press the symmetry button. I got my two pods. Oh, it's because it's the exit hatch. I mean... I just don't see why it's not letting me set it up. You did it, you just need to press next. No, it's not letting me press next, that's the thing. It's not letting me press next, meaning I... There's an unattached pod. Oh, is it because the other one's not automatically attaching? Is it because I didn't toggle snap it? This, right? Toggle snap. There's one floating way in the back. Oh, weird. Weird, 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 weird. Nobody saw that. What the heck? How does that work? Try panicking. I'm already panicking and it's not doing so well. Okay, so clearly that wasn't the solution. Let's try snapping it. There's another one? How many extra stuff do I have? Where's the other one? Okay, so this is toggle snap, right? Alright, I'm throwing these parts out. I'm throwing these parts out. I'm already confused. I clicked too many things. I clicked too many things. Can somebody remind me how to rotate the camera? There we go. All right, everybody. Use your big, big brain and your big eyes to find the other gas cameras. Where? You little shit bag. All right, everybody. Quietly. We done it. Perfect. See? I knew it. I knew it. We had too many parts here. The crew, the craft we are making will be too heavy to survive re-entry safely and too heavy to be slowed by our parachute, leading to sudden impact syndrome. And we will need to decoupler below the pod. Oh, uh, Decoupling? Decouplers can be found in the coupling tab and will let us split the craft when we no longer need the lower part. We won't be able to recover the discarded part, but at least our craft will survive re-entry and landing. Is equipped with a hopefully small explosive. Okay, so this is when you see the rocket break in half. Cool. Oh, wait a second. Okay, let me let me use my big brain. So we have the big engine at the bottom. It puts us all the way up into space, right? And then we split from the rocket. We let the thing fall down, and we just fly off in the little pod. How the hell do we get back down on Earth? How do we get back down on Earth if we're into space orbit? Real questions. Gravity? But what if you're orbiting the 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 moon, the, the space moon? Gravity still works? Not in space, right? You deorbit. Ah, okay. Sounds like the pilot's problems. Honestly, yeah, it does sound like the pilot's problems. Hold on. I'm gonna get more water. My brain, she is hurting. My brain, she is hurting. Hold on. I hope today's stream is not just a tutorial stream. I will cry if that happens. I wanna go into space.
Hello? Sorry for the delay, everyone. I had somebody knock at my door. My God. All I'm trying to do is go into space. Also wear cozy socks. <laughs> oh. You know what I need? Do you think I need another coffee? But I got an apple. Let's have an apple first. I got a coffee. I got an apple. Mm. Jose, Space Week is going to be awesome. I'm excited. Tomorrow I'm playing FTL. But uh, I'm definitely going to add this game probably next week because I want to see how much further I can get into this game as well. Um, I'm excited. Also, hold on. I kind of want to spoil something. A while ago, we talked about how I think Terraria is an ugly little game. And somebody on stream said, there is something so fun about seeing somebody play Terraria with someone else for the first time. And I talked about how when I first played Terraria, I played with a friend who played a lot of Terraria and they didn't really let me kind of experiment and do my own thing. So I thought to myself, all right, so what if I got another Niji member who is also a Terraria noob, but who I think could really go into just taking a really long time to kind of nerd out about the game with me. So TLDR, I have a Terraria collab. I just don't know if it's going to be next week or if we're going to wait until <clears throat> the ARC server is closed. Because my Terraria partner plays a lot of ARC. <laughs> you can guess who it is. You can, you can, you can guess. You can, I don't know. I'm not saying anything. I'm just going to let you know. My Terraria partner, she plays a lot of ARC. <laughs> We'll see if it's going to be next week or maybe in like two weeks. But yeah, I'm excited. And I want you to know that collab came from you, chat. You told me it would be a really fun stream to see two nerds learn Terraria. So I thought, okay, who else can show me that they're patient enough with a dumb, ugly... Uh, okay, Terraria is not dumb, but do you know what I mean? With an ugly little game. And... It's not Mika, unfortunately. I have other plans with Mika. But yeah, I'm excited. I asked her, she said yes, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. You've influenced my content for the next weeks. I hope you know that. I hope you're aware that I listen to you. It is Koto. It is... I'm excited. We might just wait two weeks, though, to do it. Because mm. she's kind of addicted to ARC. Allegedly, for entertainment purposes only. And also, I kind of want to play ARC, you know? But I'll have you all know, I listen to your ideas and I, and I execute them slowly. I just wanted to have somebody with me who can, like, be patient with the game and who can have a good time. But also... Yeah, just not get, um... I still don't think there's an EGEN I could really play Barrow Trauma with. So we'll see. It wasn't Space Week partially. Chat, probably. I hate to say it, but chat is kind of funny and cute and... Honestly, I should compliment you more, baby. Thank you, Felix. What are you baking, baby? A cheesecake. Thank you for your energy. It feels like a buddy hangs out in my kitchen. I got you, baby. I am your drunk buddy having a glass of wine while you're making cake in the kitchen, telling you about my day. Thanks for listening, baby. I really appreciate it. I hope you have such a delicious cake. Thank you, Rash. Yeah, I mean, that was all, all your idea. That was all your idea. I stole your ideas. From now on, I have decided I will take your ideas and pretend they are mine. Like Space Week. <laughs> I will take what you give me as information and make it my own and pretend it's my own. But thank you, everybody. From now on only, I mean, maybe I've done it from the beginning, but now I'm being more honest about it. I'm being more honest about my lies. 
you did steal one of my memes on Twitter. Good. And I'll keep stealing. Your memes belong to me. Okay? We share the brain cell in the honey hive. I am a god, mom, emperor. Okay? I will always steal from you. I will always take your ideas. Your ideas work for me. You know the Bugs Bunny, Bugs Bunny meme? Our idea? It's me. It's me with the honey bunny. Our memes. Our games. Our ideas. Our wine. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Decouplers can be found in the coupling tab. Decouplers can be used in many ways. Okay, so note the stack decouplers have arrows. The arrows shows which side is the side that decouples. Oh, okay. So make sure your decoupler's arrow is pointing up. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I have a question. Oh, never mind. I have an answer. I just realized. So... I was going to ask you why it needs to be pointing up versus down because it's just going to split. But the difference is if my spaceship has three parts, that's when. Because right now, if my spaceship only has two parts, right? It doesn't matter which way we decouple because it's just going to split in half. But if my spaceship has like three parts or four parts and you only want to get rid of this part, then it's important that you... No? Oh, you want the arrows up so the decoupler doesn't stay on the craft. Okay. My brain also hurts. Oh, basically, okay. You gain control of what didn't fall down. Makes sense. So if I pointed it down then it would assume that I gain control of the bottom part of my ship, which is, like, falling down. Okay. Well done. You'll recall, I hope, that in the previous tutorial, we had to adjust the staging stack when we added the engine. Uh, when you add a decoupler, the extra stage is automatically added to the stack so that any new parts below the decoupler won't be staged at the same time as those above it. This time, we are going to use a liquid propellant rocket engine. Unlike solid rocket motors, these engines don't carry their own propellants with them. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so we need our own fuel tanks. Go to the fuel tanks tab. We are still using these early parts, so there's only FTL. Oh my god. FLT is available. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. This is great. This is fine. Don't even worry about it. Okay. Um, we are going to need five of them, five of them to get into space. Are you kidding me? Before you got five tanks on the part through, let me give you another tip because efficiency is my middle name. It goes right after Vaughn. Oh, cute. Once you place the first tank, you can duplicate it by, oh my God, I should have read. You can duplicate it by holding left alt. Wow, wow, we, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. <laughs> Remember my little duplication thing? La, 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 la. I love that. I love that for me. La, 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 la. Okay. That is cool. So left alt. Oh. Three, four, five. Beautiful. It's kind of ugly. <laughs> if you hold Alt, it snaps to nodes. Yeah, it did. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. Let's switch over to the engines. Ooh. This is a liquid engine, and it needs and burns both liquid fuel and oxidizer. Okay. So, 
So, if I understand correctly, we're going to go into space with this, and then once we're high up, we just drop the whole bottom part, right? Right? Cool. Very smart. We're almost there. You're doing fine. Maybe not as speedily as someone of my caliber. Last thing we're going to need is to give the rocket a little better stability so it keeps going the way we want it. We will achieve this by adding some fins near the bottom. Set the symmetry mode to four times so we will place them on both axes. Also, turn on angle snap. Okay. You can turn on angle snap by clicking the button next to the symmetry icon. Okay. They will help you to align the fins neatly. Drop a basic fin. Cool. I am space. You're not going into orbit? Not yet. Not with that attitude. Felix, thank you so much for joining the membership. Good luck on your cheesecake, baby. Please show us photos after, please. Thank you, regular. When you say re-entry, do you mean re-entering the Earth's orbit? I have a confession. I'm not really a theoretical aerospace engineer. I'm a theoretical aerospace physicist, okay? Cool. Cool. Just in case, I wanted to be honest with you. I may have, I may have, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Please don't be surprised by my lies. <laughs> um, excellent. We've now got a rocket that will let us reach for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> I want a refund. You burn up when you enter atmosphere from space. Oh my God, I'm excited. Apology tweet when that's a great idea. After my stream, I should do an apology tweet. That is a great idea. Thank you. How did I not realize? Um, but on the bright side, that also means re-entry will be basic. You've done a great job in building basic hopper. However, you've learned a few things to build a craft. Feel free to hang around a bit. Cool. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of wanna launch it. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, can somebody explain this to me? Is this a mistake? Oh no, it goes from bottom. Okay. Never mind, it's not a mistake. So look, 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 look. I'm just trying to understand. When we launch, the first phase is gonna be this guy. He's gonna go. And then after we're high up and these have all burned down, this guy is gonna separate and drop everything. And then after we're coming all the way back down, Mr. Parachute. I did it. I did it. Thank you, everybody. We did it. It's happening. We're doing it. Things are happening to us. Suborbital flight. Learn how to escape Kerbin's atmosphere and return safely. Perfect. How do you walk with such a big brain? <laughs> Baby, I don't know. I don't know. Hello again. Glad you could make it back. Today we'll make take an exciting step. Getting our first Kerbal into space. Yes, with a capital S. Hopefully you remember the controls. Yes, uh, SW is the top. AD is the right. And QE is the left. Sort of. I don't know. I'm just going to press things and hope for the best. Can somebody explain the swivel to me really quickly? Because I didn't fully understand it in the game. I just need my ship to keep going straight, right? So if it starts going to the right, I have to tilt it to the left. That's it. So that's it. I just need to always keep the ship going straight for now. Cool. Easy. Easy. So what I did previously was bad. <laughs> Do not have the ship roll around like that.
Stability assist, yes. Your mission today is to make a short suborbital less than orbit flight out over the water to the east. It's a nice arcing pad that ensures a gentle survivable re-entry. Straight up and then straight down is not so good for survival. I've set up the pick target indicator on the nav ball as aim. Whoa. Starting with the nose pointing straight up on the launch pad or 90 degrees. Tilt east to 80 degrees on the nav ball. Oh my God, look at him. Look at my little guy. Tilt east on the nav ball. After burnout, coast up into space and have a look around. Okay. Oh, I. Oh, all right. I need a pen. It's Jebediah. Look at him. Look at him with his little hair. Jeb ready to fly. Okay. Jebediah, I have some bad news for you. You might die. <laughs> okay. Um, east is to the right. Okay. Okay. East, 80 degree. So I just tilt east and hope for the best. East is 90 degrees, but this says 80 degrees. Okay, so this is east, and it wants me to tilt here. That's what I don't understand. She missed the kerbussy joke. I'm sorry, baby. Where was it? Wait, where did you where did you make the kerbussy joke, baby? Just follow the pink circle. Okay. East? I thought you said weast. Okay. Unlike the hopper, this new craft is... Oh my god, this is different. Okay. Left shift, throttle up, and left control, throttle down. Z is throttle max. X is throttle... <laughs> SAS stands for Stability Augmentation System, although Kerbal Astronauts usually refer to it as Sickness Avoidance Scheme. Okay, so basically I need to make sure the ship doesn't spin so my little guy doesn't die. SAS can be activated, deactivated by holding down F and can be toggled by pressing the T. Okay, so I thought T was the assist y'all wanted me to use. It will cause this task to follow the target indicator. My God. Okay, there's the stability assist that you want me to use. Perfect. Perfect. Assist me. This craft has a bit too much engine, so we're going to throttle down for launch. Say you're throttled to two thirds of the upper of the two middle notches on the slider. <laughs> please be honest with me when you first read this did you feel the same way as me i just read this right and yet i'm sitting here like the fuck did i just read it's fine i'm super patient i know we'll get there i love this but like it's the fact that I just read this and then we go to the next screen and I'm like, brain empty. What did I just read? <laughs> also acceptable. Thank you for the super. I see it now. The curb bussy. Thank you so much, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now I got to press shift, right? It was shift up and shift down. So. Oh, okay. 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 Before we get to the next part of the tutorial, can somebody explain throttle to me? I love this. This is basically teaching your mom about space. So I see throttle at the bottom. I see when it's going. It wants me to put it at two thirds. It has a bit too much engine. So we're going to throttle down for launch. Okay. Why does how much engine we have 
mean we need less speed. Why does this speed, power, violence, momentum? Less speed is more fuel efficiency. Okay. It's how much fuel you are burning. Too fast is not efficient. All right. Throttle is how your fast your engine's going to be. Okay. You can burn up the friction. Okay. 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 So. These are my fuel tanks. My engine is this. So why would they say my craft has too much engine? I don't understand. When we were building the craft. When we were building the craft, why didn't we just use less engine? Big engine, small rocket. Ah. Okay, so basically, my engine is too strong for this. I get it. I get it. So basically what he's telling me is this engine is too strong for how small my rocket is. So we need to fly into space slower so that we don't go too fast. And if we go too fast, it's harder to control. It can burn up, etc. So this engine is just the cheapest engine I have is too strong for this rocket. Cool. If I had added other things like weight then it would be fine like maybe if i had more of these like things on my rocket the little the little guys the little balls thank you acceptable i don't understand what that means okay so they want me to throw okay whenever i play these kinds of games i like to understand what i'm doing um i feel it's the best way to learn something right if i just go and do what the game wants me to do and i don't ask questions i don't understand so i need to ask a lot of questions and i just it's the best way that i understand so basically in this case they're just telling me sometimes your engine will be too strong where can we learn stop i just realized how we're gonna learn so the way i'm gonna learn if my engine is too strong okay if I was playing this right now and I would launch the rocket into space, exactly, trial and error, I would launch it into space, it would probably blow up before we get to the top. So when I relaunch the rocket, I will then try and go, all right, let's curb it to one third and see how it does. And then, oh, let's put it up here. There's my trial and error. And I could be doing trial and error in many different areas depending on why my rocket, you know, for example, did I get into space? If I didn't get into space, I have deeper problems. Like, I have deeper problems if I haven't gotten into space than if my parachute works or not, right? That's something I can do later. Later, after I've gotten into space, I can then see how my parachute worked. Nice. I love it. I love it. I understand everything. Also, did y'all make Pomu buy this game? Because yesterday, Pomu asked me when I'm streaming this. I was talking with Ike and um, Aya. And I was showing Aya my thumbnail for this game. And Pomu was like, Nina? 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 Hold on, hold on. I'll tell you. I, I think I showed her my title. And Nina goes, oh my god, Nina, are you actually playing Kerbal Space Program? And then I said, yeah. She said, will you be able to fly me to the moon for real? And then she asked me when I'm streaming it. And she says she'll be at the doctor's, unfortunately. So she won't be able to see, which I think is a lie. I think she just said that so that she won't watch my stream. Mentioned the also Lucy. She did say she'll be back later. She might try to watch. I love you, Pomo, if you're here. I love you, Pomo, if you're here. Oh, and I recommended Enter the Gungeon to Millie. Millie's been wanting to maybe play Isaac, and I'm like, listen, listen, listen. If you're going to play Isaac, play Enter the Gungeon. <laughs> right, Afton? Sorry, Jebediah Kerman. Sorry, baby. 
Okay. So stability assist. Mm -hmm. During this lesson, some of the information is quite detailed and could take a while to read. Detailed info, press escape to pause when necessary. Anytime you may press escape to pause the game. In the pause menu, you can restart the flight. End this tutorial. Double check your throttle is set to two thirds, the upper middle, two notches, and SAS is enabled. Then hit space when you're ready to launch. Remember to start turning at 50 M. Okay. Um, where do I turn again? I turn east, right? I forgot how to turn. <laughs> um, I forgot how to turn. It's control shift for the throttle. And then Z, what's Z and X? Tap D to turn. Okay, perfect, perfect thing. Right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Okay. Wait for a bit more speed. Oh, 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 turn! Like this? 80? Like this? 80, 80? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? The purple thing's not even guiding me! That's 45? Oh, wait a second. Was I supposed to be at the 90? The purple thing is on 80. Oh. Uh -huh. It wanted you to go slow. Well, maybe I like to go fast. What about what I want? Space is up, Nina. Okay, so basically I just need to keep my thing on the on the thing. Oh my god, I'm doing it. Oh my god, I'm doing it. Oh my god, I'm doing it. Whoa, now go whoa. You should be able to let Sass keep the crap. Go ahead and throttle up to full power. Right? What? Okay. Everybody quiet. Everybody quiet. Everybody quiet. Nobody talk. Everybody quiet. Shh. Nobody talk. Everybody quiet. Am I? Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Question. 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 My little round. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. You can talk. You can talk. You can talk. You can talk. I take it back. You can talk. You can talk. Uh, question. You see, I'm aiming my little guy, right? So the question is, do I just keep aiming in the middle with my yellow or does the green need to make sure that the pink is in the middle of the green? So my question is, do I make sure my yellow is in the middle of the purple or do I make sure that the green is surrounding the purple? Yellow is my aim. So I need to make sure that the green is covering the pink button. Okay. Okay. Cool. Where I'm aiming is just so I can see where it's going. Cool. So yeah, I, right now is amazing basically. And I can like speed it up a bit to keep it in the middle. Oh my god, I'm so good at the game. I'm so good at the game. Look at me. <laughs> if you ever decide to do more KSP, I highly recommend a channel called Scott Manley. He's been playing the game since beta release and has a ton of useful game tutorials. Thank you, Grievous. I think for these types of games, I'm the kind of gamer where I like to start and make my mistakes first. I like to make mistakes first. And then after that, kind of learn about the game. Thank you so much. Always cover the pink button. Yeah. So basically my goal, my goal is to make sure that the green ring 
is always around the pink button in the middle, right? You're going too far. No, I'm not. Not yet. Thank you, Nate. Green is your direction of travel. Yellow wings are where you're pointing. They're not always the same. Wait, so I just need to make sure I'm on the pink. That's it. You're aiming at 65. So you was going 55 and a 54. Chad is leading you astray. You want to point the yellow into pink, not the green. Okay. So not the green, just the yellow and the pink. I am using sass. But like, I also want to... Okay, yeah, I'm using sass. Lol. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. You've got the rocket just where it needs. You should be able to let sass keep the craft steady. Now go up ahead and throttle to full power. Let's go! First try. Great work. You've succeeded in getting your ship on a trajectory bound for space. I've now set your target indicator to align with your velocity vector that will minimize drag by turning the smallest side of the vehicle into the airflow. Somewhere around here, we'll see the navel. You might have noticed some flickering flames near the end of our burn, which is due to the high speed of your craft in the atmosphere. Normally, our ascent would be a little slower, but I'm sure my friend Werner has helped you build a ship that can withstand this heat. And besides this high and this slow, you'll be fine. If you want to have a look at your trajectory, switch to the map. Oh my god, I'm so confused. Now, yeah, align the yellow with the green. Perfect. Oh my god, I'm in space! I'm in space! Now that we're... Okay, I'm not... I am in space, sort of. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, why do I need to align the yellow with the green? Is my question. When, shouldn't I be keeping the yellow in the middle of the pink? Less drag for aerodynamics. Okay, so I don't understand why sometimes I have to be in the pink and sometimes I have to be in the green. Yellow aligned with green means your ship is aligned with your direction of travel. Green is where you are aiming. Yellow is where you're going. I'm confused. Okay, the pink is my mission. So, okay, I am confused. It's okay. So, should I direct this into the green? Or it doesn't matter at this point anymore. You don't always go where you aim. No matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. Question, there's no BGM, is it on purpose? There was music before in the game. There's probably going to be music after. It's just in space. There's no music, baby. <laughs> but seriously, I think there was music before. And for some reason, it just stopped. My God, look at us. Wait, the music really did, right? Music when you reach space. Ah. Ba da 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 da. Ba ba. Ba ba. Oh. Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> Calculated. 
while we float up here beyond the atmosphere, I'll quickly tell you about a couple of things you can do. With an advanced enough astronaut complex in the case. KSC. We can train our Kerbals to be able to spacewalk or EVA, although we won't be doing that on this flight. Also, when we are carrying science devices like our goo containers, we can perform experiments. Feel free to play with the goo canisters right now na- right now by right clicking on them. I'll let you know when it's time for the next phase. Um I made a mistake. I clicked space. I lost half my rocket. Air makes you ship go where your nose is pointing. In space, you can just rotate around and nothing stops you. Oh, thank you. All right. Oh, oopsies. Wait. Feel free to play with the goo canister by right-clicking them. Observe mystery goo. Mystery goo observation while in space near Kerbin. The goo's oh seems to have clumped in a space in a sphere. It also appears to have become brittle. Transmit data. Keep experiment. Transmit data. Oh wait. No. Keep experiment. What about this goo? I love science. Science is fun and exciting. Um, inoperable after tra- warning. Detailed press escape to pause. As we near the edge of the atmosphere again, it's time to reorient the pod to get ready for reentry. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't decouple yet. Am I right, everybody? Okay. I have a question for everybody. Also, Sophie, thank you so much for the donation. I'm sorry I missed it, Sophie. Space. Okay, I have a serious question for everybody. Um what does he mean when he okay? <sighs> I promise I have a theoretical degree in aerospace engineering physics, okay? I promise it's not a lie. My question is this, okay. I thought you go, okay. Let me try to explain what's in my small brain. You go up, right, into space. But I thought once you're in space, you don't come down anymore. You're just orbiting the Earth. But this guy is saying that we are getting ready to re-enter the atmosphere. So we are going to go down. You do come down. I wish they taught me at this at my degree. So you do come down. I never realized that when you get into space, you're always falling. So... That's why, even though we got into space, we're gonna fall down. Because I didn't reach orbit. How many kilometers is orbit? If space was 70 kilometers, how many kilometers is orbit? So we basically just went up, and because we're within Earth's gravity, we're gonna go back down. Okay, I understand. I swear I had no idea. I assumed that the second you get into space, you're just automatically floating into space. (laughs) I'm sorry. Gravity still, still applies. Okay. 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 I, I genuinely thought if you reach space, you're just going to float into space forever. I genuinely thought that. I'm so sorry. I know this is probably not very smart of me to admit, but I need to understand this if I am to play the science game. Orbit is not a distance. It's the speed you're going sideways. So then how do you stay in orbit? How do you stay in orbit? What makes you stay around the Earth but not go down in the gravity? When you go fast enough, okay? Velocity. 
your own speed. Hold on, hold on. You're typing a little fast. <laughs> I have to like concentrate. With enough speed, you'll fall very, very slowly. Increase speed until it is falling faster than the force of gravity. But you're falling to the other side, basically, right? You're basically going opposite. So. Okay, I'm not going to understand. I don't fully yet understand orbit, but maybe we'll get there next time. You stay in orbit if you are moving faster along with the pop out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The earth pulls you in, okay? Because it's obsessed with you and it loves you and it wants to cuddle you. So you just need to push back a little bit more to stay in orbit. But then how do you not fly away even further from the earth? So you just need to like find the right speed where it's like just push sideways. Think of it like a funnel and a ball circling the funnel. If you have enough space, you will circle forever. Oh, okay. If you have enough, okay, okay, okay. Gravity will keep you there. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think I'm getting it. You just gotta juggle it. You just gotta juggle it. Awesome, okay, cool. I'm already going to bed less stupid. I just want everybody to know your fox mom is already going to bed less stupid because I now know I genuinely thought if you just went up into space that you just would never fall down. I'm so sorry. I genuinely believe that if you just went into space, you'd never, ever fall down. So now I'm already learning that you can fall down. <laughs> Very common misunderstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, I know this puts my, my degree definitely into question, but... <laughs> There is a point you could fly off, right, Katunga? So technically, technically, I could... Okay, so the way gravity is, is I could eventually, if I go too far out of the Earth, break away from the Earth's invisible string, break away from Earth's gravity, and I will be floating through space, right? And then I will only suck into something if it has a big enough gravitational pull. So maybe another planet is near, or maybe, I don't know, do asteroids have gravitational pull? Probably. Yeah, it's more like a magnet. It's just easy for me to see it as like a string and seeing the string break in my head. Thank you, ELC. Cool. That's why rockets always sort of tilt towards the horizon. Everything has pull. Okay. Technically, everything has gravity. All mass has gravity. Technically, everything in space is always exerting gravity on everything. But if you get far away, yeah. Okay. If I have too little speed, I fall down. If I have too much speed, I fly away from Earth. If I have the perfect speed that I'm kind of doing this little dance with Earth where it's keeping me close, but I'm also pushing back against the closeness where I'm just basically like floating around it. But I'm not going down and I'm not tethering away. Cool. Um, just like I exert my gravity on the honey bunnies. <laughs> Urchon is like, it's not like I like you or anything, but come back. Cool. Um, wow, did I learn today. Oh, my God. Press the M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the M on the map. Hold on. Yeah, see? All right. Give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second. Everything hurts. It will all make more sense. I really want to keep playing this game. Damn it. I'm going to play this game next week again. 
now that I understand a little bit, listen, we all have to learn a little bit here and there. I will become a space aficionado after this. Hold on. Um, thank you for all the supas. I'm sorry I missed it. Ryoka, thank you for the explanation. No knowledge. Thank you so much. It's like throwing a ball. The faster you throw it, the farther it goes. Orbit is throwing the ball fast enough. It goes as far as the curve of the Earth. Hey, the Earth is curvy. Marshall, thank you for the super. To be able to go into orbit, you need to leave the atmosphere and have enough horizontal speed, but not too much or you kind of fall forever. Thank you. Outrun the wind. Imagine you're throwing a ball. The ball moves forward and falls towards the ground. Orbit is when you move forward fast enough so that you miss the earth. Okay, wait, that confused me. Imagine you're throwing a ball. Okay. The ball moves forward and falls toward the ground. Orbit is where you miss the ground. I, that confused me. I'm sorry, baby. But thank you so much. Gamma Rage, thank you for the super. Orbiting is propelling yourself in a straight line. As you're going in a straight line, the Earth's gravity pulls you downward. Hold on. I'm, believe it or not, I'm like turning with my finger. Oh! Oh my God, I just understood how orbiting works. Believe, okay, I really wish I had, I had a 3D body because what I just did, you don't understand. I'm holding, okay, I'm holding my left finger up, okay? And then my right finger, I am just diagonally turning it and imagining the earth pull and because, so it's going straight, right? But since the earth is pulling it, it's orbiting. I just understood orbiting. <laughs> I'm 900 years old. Damn it. That's why you're like tethering around it. <laughs> Maybe I should have learned these things before playing a space game. <laughs> I'm 900 years old and I just understood why orbiting works. Yeah. See, if you keep going straight, right? The earth is pulling you. You keep going like diagonally, right? The earth is pulling you and then you just kind of go around it because of that. <laughs> Brain blast. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. If it's going too slow, it will get pulled into the earth. If it's going too fast. Oh my God. <laughs> i'm so good at explaining things you all are <laughs> but yeah gam rage you're the reason i understood thank you how does it feel you're gonna go to bed tonight and you're gonna be like wow my visual made my my fox mother understand orbit <laughs> i should have had this in school honestly i think i would have been way more into physics My God. Honestly, it's this that got me. Orbiting is propelling yourself in a straight line. As you're going in a straight line, the Earth's gravity pulls you downward. That creates the circle. <laughs> Listen, Sloth. I want to understand this before. I'm, I'm speed running against the tutorial. Grievous, thank you for the super. Orbit is just a fancy way of saying that you're going faster sideways than the force of gravity is pulling you down to make you go down. In this game, that means 80 kilometer and two 200 ms. You're going faster sideways than the force of gravity pulling you down. Yeah, so you're always kind of rotating. I, I think the previous one I understood a bit more, but yes. In orbit, Consulus, thank you for the super. <laughs> I want to read everyone's suggestions, maybe to see. I want to see you explain this. Oh, Coover. Okay. You know how Pomu is like so obsessed with Metal Gear? And anytime anything happens, Pomu's always trying to talk about Metal Gear. <laughs> Imagine me in the Discord group call just explaining gravity. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Millie, so listen. The, the the gravity of the earth if you just keep going sideways okay the earth pulls you in you orbit the earth it's the orbit <laughs> and Millie's just like mom you're drunk go home <laughs> I'm just explaining 
<laughs> how the Earth orbit works to my coworkers. <gasps> no, actually, Ramen, I bought it on Steam. I just imagined Millie being like, Mom, stop. It's okay, next time. Okay, can I? I wish to say this. I think the next special week we're going to have, I need to make sure I get, you know, everything figured out. Don't get too excited. But I think the next time I have a special week, it's going to be Warhammer week. Where I learn about Warhammer. <laughs> it's gonna be my next, like, special <laughs> week. <laughs> oh my god. I like to learn about 40k, because it looks crazy. The, the one with the machines and the Necrons. Nina 40 Kosaka. First orbits, next Omnisaya. <laughs> okay, let me let me read all of these and then we get back into the game. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any of them. Thunderbird, thank you for the super. Go where no fox has gone before the stars away. Thank you. Hooded Teddy, thank you for the super. Think of orbit if you are going so fast to the side that you miss the earth. See, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. It only took a while. <laughs> I've already learned physics. <laughs> I am the physics. Um, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Fire star, uh, fireball starfish. The planet is round. Being in orbit is when you're going sideways fast enough that the arc of your fall matches the curve of the planet's surface. So you'll neither fall back down nor float away. Thank you. That, okay. That's also why it's orbit. Because the Earth has a curve. So, yeah, the, the, the gravity is coming from the, okay. I get it. I'm smart. Now figure out what Delta V is. Delta V, my favorite. <laughs> thank you, Acceptable. Not to be confused with Delta IV. Uh, and Samantha, thank you so much for the soup. Uh, being in a stream, watching someone learn to understand orbital mechanics is so fun. It's so great seeing how excited you are. I just want to be the best at this game ever. I'm excited. Technically, the moon is in a constant state of falling towards the Earth. That's why it's grab. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to ask a pretty interesting question. Is there a way that the moon can ever deorbit the Earth? Would it take like a meteor to strike because if the meteor strikes earth or a meteor strikes the moon could it eventually deorbit the earth or fall you know all those movies where it's like moon crashes into earth it's slowly doing that already slowly getting farther away <laughs> no moonshan come back yeah, but the momentum has to change, which I think could happen with like what, like a meteor strike. She is going away already. She's going to come back, right? With the milk. I know she went to the store, but she's going to come back with the milk, right? It take another moon or a very fast meteor. Very fast. I love that you wrote the last very fast Gubby in like capital letter. Very fast. The amount of energy needed to redirect the moon is absurd. Okay. So basically, you cannot send a meteor into the moon. Or, sorry. We probably cannot create something just yet that could push the moon away if it takes that level of energy. If we put enough rockets to the moon, we can make a moon ship. Hmm. Yeah. So currently we don't have the technology for that. Don't worry, mom. By the time the Earth loses the moon, 
the sun will be swallowing up the entire planet. Also, US and why? I just noticed I completely missed your super chat. I am so sorry, darling. I was I was too busy orbiting. Imagine you're sliding in a boat on ice in Minecraft. If you want to change direction, you have to point the boat away in the direction you're traveling. That makes sense to me. I used to ride a canoe solo. Not like a kayak, but a canoe. That I understand. I am great at that. If you sit at the front of the canoe, it's very different than if you sit at the back of the canoe. I know how that, I, I can canoe, is basically what I'm trying to say. That I understand. It takes a little bit before you slide in the same direction you're facing. Yes. You can change your direction, but then it takes a little bit for the boat to start going there. Awesome. See, I get it. It's basically like a space canoe, if you think about it. If you think about it, I'm basically in a big space canoe. Ah! Oh my god, my apple. One second. One second. Cool. I'm excited. <laughs> if luck is on our side, we might find a moon that could crash into ours because she's lonely. She learned inertia. I'm learning. There we go. My apple fell to the ground. Gravity. <laughs> if I throw my apple from high up, it'll fall down faster. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Blade. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you so much. I'm excited for Outer Wilds this week. I'm not going to lie. And for FTL tomorrow. I love this for me. I love this for me. If you throw it fast enough, the apple will orbit. Exactly. If I put a little engine on the apple, it will orbit me. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right, everybody. Let's get back into the game. Please, please stop the supas. Please. I adore you all. But please stop the supas. Stop spreading the supas around. Please. It was in that moment of brain blasting realization that she ceased to become a fox mom. Green fleece, I am no longer fox mom. I am space mom. Acceptable. Thank you for the soup. A wine for the wine god. Mom for the mom throne. Space for the space fox. Acceptable. Thank you again. Gents, find yourself a lady that understands orbital mechanics. I'm not even there yet. No matter how heavy you get, she'll always be around. A. Oh, because she'll orbit you with your gravity? Stop! Stop it! Stop! Please! First of all, stop calling me Space Fox. Stop calling me Star Fox because Nintendo is going to come for me. Okay? Mr. Nintendo Nintenderson is going to come for me. Number one. Number two. Please. Please stop. I want to play the game. Stop. Please. 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 I beg. It's fine. I'll just have to read them after. Is that what you want? Oh, wait a second. Oh, okay. I'll just have to read them after. Is that what you want? Is this what you want? You wish for me not to read them as they come through. That's fine. I'll do that. Okay. I'll do that. I'm turning off my stream labs. I can't even read them anymore. Boom. Thank you, everybody. I, I really appreciate it. Isn't that what most streamers do? But I like to read them during the stream because I, I like, I like, um, it feels more fresh, you know? Like, if you read them, look at me. I'm like, oh my God, it's so hard. I make so much money. It's stop. I'm just out here trying to learn space and you're giving me money. Stop that. I think it's instant gratification for me and the viewer. It's interactive. And usually it has to do with the topic. Sometimes when I read supas after the stream, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't even know if this person is here. Exactly. They're often exactly contextual to the stream. 
And I'm just saying, we're done. No, I'm kidding. We're not done. I love you all. Thank you so much for your supas. I will read some of them after because I got to get into space. Okay. Hey, mom. Sorry for loving you. It's fine, green fleece. I guess it's okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, you, you all spoil me so much. I'm just out here trying to figure out how space works. <laughs> Bye, Clover. Take it easy, baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's continue. As we near the edge of the atmosphere again, it's time to reorient the pod to get ready for re-entry. We're only going to re-enter with the pod and shoot in the goo canisters. By the way, for anybody that missed it, I accidentally pressed space already. So it already detached the bottom part of my ship. I hope that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Huh? In real missions, it's best to keep your upper stage around until the last moment. You never know when you're going to need it. Why? Because it has extra fuel? Why would I need it again? Yeah, I know, I know, tactical. I cannot press it again. I know, I know, I know. Anyway, it's best to re-enter but first, since we're ascended at about 70 degree pitch, we'll naturally re-enter at about minus 70 degrees. That means if you want to aim the top of the capsule at the 70 degree pitch line, but the opposite heading, this is at a heading of 270 on the nav ball and 70 degrees pitch. I place a target marker to help you see. Okay, well, this makes sense, right? So if I am right, I want to go left. Oh, oi, oi, oh, oi. I'm, I'm oi, out of intelligence. That's me. Oh, that makes sense, Mr. Plane. So you want to keep everything until the, the very last minute. Turn sass off. Change your attitude. Damn. Stop. My attitude is great. Okay. So I'm going to turn sass off. Oh, 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 M. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, shit. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> I'm turning the sass back on. My god, look at Jebediah. <laughs> look at Jebediah! <laughs> look at Jebediah! <laughs> He's like, wow, are we? I fucking love space. <laughs> He's having the time of his life. <laughs> He's freaking having the time of this life. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it, Michael. No stress. Listen, listen, we're still here. We're still trying. I just want to make sure that I at least beat the tutorial today on stream because this has taken me a long time. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, everybody, everybody quiet. Okay. Oh my god, look at him. Look at Mr. Oh, oh, I'm going. Ooh. So this is. Am I supposed to go into this triangle? Or am I supposed to go into the round thing? Is my question. Am I in the right thing? Jeb is pogged out of his brain. Listen, let him live. I have to find the round thing. The triangle is the. Okay. So the triangle is the opposite of where I'm supposed to go. Target is the pink marker, not magenta. All right, ignore the triangle for now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I have many questions. What's the blue thing? So the triangle is something completely different that I don't need to worry about. What's the blue thing? And I'm supposed to move to the pink thing, right? Da, move, of course, my said George. Okay, it's something in the future. Blue and purple are perpendicular to your orbit. Blue is up, down. Oh! Blue is up, down, according to the planet. Okay. 
Okay, they're going to explain to me in the future. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, um, I just have to be aimed right here, and I'm good. Nice. Hold steady on your new attitude. Let Saz do his job. Hold on. Let me turn my keep experiment. During re-entry with your pod, orient it this way. Drag produce items near the top. Aerodynamic forces alone will hold it properly stabilized. So it's time to turn Sass off and let the air do the work for you. Once it's off and you've hit atmosphere, we'll move to the next. Wait, what do you mean it doesn't look right? What? What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? I'm not going the wrong, I'm not going the right way. I want to put my butt to the planet. Look at my pod. How can I see my pod? Is it M? Hold on. I'm trying to put my butt. Where do you see my pod as it is? Where do you see it? You're going the right way. You're just face. Yeah, I'm going down, but I need to make sure my butt is down. I keep hiding it with a pause menu. Oh! Girl. Ah, 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 ah. Like that. Ah! Huh. Perfect. Detailed info. Press escape to pause. You're now re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere. Make sure you keep all hands and feet inside the pod. We don't want you getting burned or anything. Don't mind the flames. Last time we watched the parachute icon to wait for the right time to operate. This time we're going to do something different. Remember in the construction tutorial where you designed the vessel, you set the chute to not semi-deploy until 0.75. That means the chute won't perform the first of its two deployment steps until then. Even if you activate it by staging now. On Kerbin means about 2,000 meters altitude above sea. And the craft should be traveling slowly enough by then that the chute will survive deployment. Oh, if I... I never knew that. So yeah, if I use my parachute too early, it might go too fast and it'll just break it, I guess. That's interesting. Okay. Let's take the bold step of arming the chute now and let the smarts in there pop it at the right attitude. You know you can trust me. Yeah, okay, cool. The air drag will... Perfect, yeah, it's just going too fast and then it's going to completely, completely... Okay. Um, you want me to prepare the parachute now, right? Oh, wait, oh! Wait a second, if I don't use... Hold on. If I turn off my sass, it automatically goes back up. Yeah, I can just turn off Saz, the wind will do the rest. But then it's going to move. Aim towards the green circle. The atmosphere will get you aligned. All right. I'm feeling very aligned. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is this supposed to happen? Oh my God, I can't believe that was supposed to happen. I cannot believe. Okay, wait a second, but it's not fully straight. Is that okay? It's not fully straight. It's good. Okay. All right, my parachute is armed, and now we wait until we hit to 2,000. While we set your chute to not actually semi-deploy until around, we do need to ensure that the opening height, its second, is correct. You can even adjust these parameters. Don't touch the pressure slider or bad things will happen. And make sure the full deploy altitude is no less than 1,000, or you will not have enough time to slow down. That's fine. Once you're satisfied, just hang on about 2k kilometers and watch the parachute trickle itself. Oh my god. 
Now we're waiting. I want you to look at the bottom of the capsule. Note that you do not have a heat shield. You don't need one because there is such a gentle flight. Actually, a heat shield will make things more dangerous on the craft. Okay. I have a question. Why did we do that thing when we were falling down where the thing just went crazy and then aligned itself back down? Why did that happen? And is that, why is that always going to happen? Why doesn't it just go? Friction, aerodynamics. Because the mass is in the butt, air drag. Because you didn't aim the correct marker. Okay. Capsule is air stable and it automatically will orient itself on its own. All right, all right. The heavy part will always go down. Yeah, I did orient myself to the correct marker. Oh my God, they're coming for me. So now I just press, wait. This guy is telling me my parachute will automatically go down, right? Watch the parachute trigger. Oh my God, they're coming. They're coming for Jebediah. Do you hear that? They're coming for Jebediah. They think Jebediah. Press space to be sure. Your goo canister acted as wings, turning your pot into a dart. Interesting. You don't have to do anything now. I mean, let me see once it hits 2K. Oh, 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 we're falling. All right, is it going to activate? Please, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh my god, 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 look at Jebediah's face. I cannot believe that happened to me. Ow, ow, oh my God. I'm wearing shorts and I stuck on my chair. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Ave Maria. I can't believe I did that. Zen, good morning, darling. How am I better now that I've achieved space flight? and learned about orbit and realize I know nothing about space. <laughs> Welcome back and congratulations on completing and even surviving your first real mission. You managed to launch, control your vessel into space, orient yourself correctly and land safely. That's quite an achievement. If you want to practice this again, choose revert to launch from the pause menu. Um, why did he not have me throw away my thing? Or when the first time I pressed space, it would have thrown it away. Because I had already thrown down my extra part, but he was like, don't throw it away just yet. So, yeah, I just feel like, where was that going to happen in the tutorial? He did ask me to do it later. He would have told you to, it skipped. Yeah, probably because I didn't have it on already. He mentioned it after he needed to reorient for entry. Okay, so... He did mention he wanted you to stage the engine. Okay, cool. I can't believe this happened. I achieved flight. Sometimes you want to ditch it close to the atmosphere so it burns up. Right. And then it either, so that way it doesn't just float in space. And also that way it doesn't fall down on the earth. Makes sense. Um, advanced construction. And then go for orbit. We're going to at least get to, to science basics today. This tutorial presented by famous rocket scientists covers how to design a craft that can orbit Kerbin and return safely. Welcome to the third and final tutorial about construction. Go inside the VAB. In our last tutorial, we built a vessel that could escape the atmosphere, but it didn't have enough oomph to escape for long. This time around, we'll cover more advanced rocket design concepts like multiple stages and boosters. Oh my god, boosters. Oh, my head hurts and we haven't even started. 
You'll notice that there are a lot more parts available. Ooh. Rechargeable battery pack. That's what I like. However, the main principle is the same, so I hope you remember what I thought you... Yes, uh, you need a parachute at the top. Then you need... Your little guy's pod. And then at the bottom, you need the stuff that propels you up. Yeah. Cool. Pretty, pretty makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. I can be a, I can, I can continue my job of being a rocket scientist builder. You'll notice that there are lots more parts available. That's because an orbit capable craft is much more complex than the little puddle jumper I showed you how to make last time. However, the main principles are the same. If you mess up, somehow manage to delete your whole craft. <laughs> Again, you only have one pod available. All right, so my pod is the command center where the person is. Perfect. My little person is inside there. Again, you only have one pod. Do I only have one parachute? Let's find out. Ooh. Right. So we're going to put the pod and the parachute on top. We already know that. Um. Oh. Just like last time, select a parachute in place. Let's see, I just did it too fast. I already, you see what I mean? I already freaking know what to do in the game. I'm a freaking amazing. Just like last time, adjust the parachute parameters by clicking the part you just placed. Oh, I'm going to have to always adjust them. Ooh. 0.75 and then altitude 1000. Perfect. Next. We are now going to construct an upper stage. We'll finish placing the pod in orbit and once there, provide RCS steering thrusters and electricity. My God. It will also provide all maneuvering capability in orbit, including the re-entry burn. Oh my God. It's going to consist of a decoupler. So we are going to drop it like it's hot. An RCS fuel tank, a liquid fuel tank, four thrusters, four solar panels, four batteries. Oh my God. Okay. So I need to understand what we are doing. We are creating a rocket who's first we need to. Okay. First, we need to get the rocket into orbit. Then it needs to stay into the orbit. And then it needs to land safely. Perfect. When it's in the orbit, that's why it needs the solar panels, the batteries, the everything. Um, so we got to be a little bit mindful that the rocket I'm sending into space will be a lot heavier. There's going to be a lot more stuff and there's a lot more stuff. Cool. Okay. Firstly, we need to add a stack decoupler below the pod to let us discard the parts we don't want to bring. So for example... To get into space, I need a engine or whatever. The thing that goes brrrr. And then as soon as I get into orbit, I can get rid of it. I don't need it. And it's going to make my rocket easier to handle because it's going to have less parts. And it's going to be less heavy and it's going to be less everything. Cool. But I did still need it to go back up. Going back down is a different problem. Cool. Grab a decoupler and attach it to the bottom of the pod with the arrow pointing down, of course. Um, okay. No, the arrow's pointing up because the decoupler, I wanted to keep this. Okay. The arrows are pointing down. That's not good. Detach it from the pod, then use WASD. Cool. All right. So it's pointing up. Perfect. We'll add an RCS tank, reaction control system. This fuel will help us with fine maneuvers. Go to the tanks category. Let me just see where they are while we're here. My God. Has anyone ever gone into space and just forgotten to, I don't know, bring a fuel tank? <laughs> you just go into space and then you're like, wait, a or you go into space, you're like, wait a second. I forgot to bring my batteries. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> All right, I'm excited that's going to happen to me. Let me just take a difference between them. So this fuel tank is just a bigger variant of this fuel tank. Okay. Oxidizer, liquid fuel. Monopropellant. These fuel tanks store monopropellant. New advances in plumbing made it possible to route to any point in the ship. Okay. Any point in the ship. 
Is this why this... Oh, I just understood something. So this little guy, the little, the little thingy right here, that means it goes down. But this guy can go to the side. No, never mind. I'm wrong. What is that little... I thought this meant it could be attached to the side, but it doesn't. That's not what it means. <laughs> oh, it's skins. Oh, my God. Never mind. I thought I was being so smart. I thought I was the smartest. Okay. So the chances are the way that this is going to work is I'm going to have this and then I'm going to have another decoupler, right? Most likely. Your craft is not going to need all the mono propellant in the tank. So to save some weight, right click to get the parts option and move the slider down to 96 unit. Okay, so that way it's less heavy. Is this my weight? 1558 at the bottom. Mono propellant is called that because while large rocket engine use two propellers, fuel and oxidizer, RCS uses single. RCS is generally less effective, but is good for small velocity changes in any direction. Um. Oh, it's the cost. I got money. I got money. Uh -huh. We'll be adding multiple liquid fuel tanks in the stage to get the right amount of upper stage engine. And we need an extra tank to offset the weight. So add a tiny rocket propellant tank. It's the one named FT. Okay. And then we're going to do the big one. Interesting. I thought I was going to decouple them, but I guess not. Lastly, for the main parts of this upper stage, we'll add an engine. The Terrier engine produces almost no thrust at sea level air pressure, but it's highly efficient in space and above 20 km, where the atmosphere is thin enough to not interfere with the exhaust. This makes it a good choice for an upper stage. Oh, this is the top of my rocket. It, there's going to be a bottom tar. Okay. Whoa, we're going to have two engines? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So... I heard you like rockets. So I put a rocket on top of your other rocket. Oh my God. Which is why this rocket's better when it's up there. Yeah, I'm building the rocket backwards. Again, okay, Neko, that makes sense. So instead of building my rocket from the bottom up, I'm building my rocket from the top up, which I get it. It's not that confusing if you just keep doing it. Whoa! And we call each a stage, right? So, but if you think about it, a stage is just a bunch of little rockets put together or a bunch of little things. So for example, like this guy right here with the decoupler, that's like one thing. That's, if you think about it, it's a little mini rocket. It cannot fly on its own, but once it's falling down, it's my little rocket falling down with my little parachute, with my little guy. Yeah, like, and then here with the engine, that's going to be my rocket number two. But they're all together. And then at the bottom, rocket number three. Oh my god. Lastly, for the main parts, we'll add an engine, the Terrier. Okay, so the Terrier is good for when you're up in the sky. Max temperature, no, no, no. This makes a good choice for an upper stage since the engine will not be activated until the rocket has reached the condition. Okay, so... If you select the wrong engine, you can always throw away... Okay, perfect. So now we should probably decouple soon again. Nicely done. That's a pretty well-assembled upper stage, if I do say so myself. I'll let you get to orbit if you put enough rocket under it. And the thing is, if we put a rocket under it, we need fuel for the rocket. So now we're going to need to add fuel at the bottom of the rocket, little wings at the bottom of the rocket, to control it. Wouldn't we need little wings here too? I feel like we might need little wings here and then little wings at the bottom as well. The main problem in space is that aerodynamics don't apply. Thus, you need the fuel to change direction. Thank you, acceptable. Wings are for stability. You don't need wings in space. Oh, damn. Okay. 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 Yeah. But I will need wings on my bottom rocket. Damn. Maybe I just like wings because they look cute. Damn. Also, sail ears, thank you for before. Your goo canister acted as wings, turning your pod into a dart. Wings look cool. 
Okay. A lot of modern rockets don't have wings. Screw them. We're going to have wings. Nicely done. That's a pretty well-assembled upper stage. To make sure that your ship flies controllably, some parts need to be placed carefully around a point inside the ship called the center of mass. This calm is a spot where the mass on one side is balanced by the mass on the other side. This makes the calm such a useful, important thing that we added a tool to the assembly building. Okay, let's adjust the fuel levels in some of the tanks and see how that affects the center of the mass. Right click on each fuel tank and drag the fuel and oxidizer pro propellant levels down to zero. Don't touch the monopropellant. Okay. If you, as you're doing this, you will see the comm move during the flight's vessel. Comm will move to the same way it burns the fuel until the tanks are empty. So he's just telling me where the center of my rocket is by the weight, right? So if I get rid of all my fuel, my center's higher? What? Does my center matter for? Balance and stability and rotation. Okay. If you're top heavy, you might tip over in flight. Handling and stability. If you're top heavy, you're unstable. So basically, yeah, if this runs out, we're more top heavy. But I guess, I mean, the center of mass is never going to be. I think I'll understand how this works better when I actually start playing the game. Because right now, I'm just a little good. Like, I understand, obviously, it's nice to know where the middle is and where the middle is going to be after my fuel is drained. But right now. Yeah, we're going to we're going to get it once I will. I will get there. It will rotate around this point. Yeah. So if this is when I'm in space, it's going to rotate here and this is where it's going to do the little spinny. Um, But then if this falls off, I don't know. Yeah, and then if I discard this, the center of gravity will change. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. I think we'll get there when we get there. I think right now, even if I try to understand it, it, it won't really, really make sense. Um, It won't super really make sense. Yeah, okay, okay. See, so now that's the center of gravity. Now that's the center of gravity. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get it. I I get it. I, I get it, sort of. Like, yeah, I, I understand that, you know, if I have this, then the gravity is, yeah. With no other influences, you'll rotate around. Thank you. Okay, now go ahead and refill the tanks and we can proceed to some of the accessories. Why would you have me unfill them to refill them? I'm kidding. I know it's a good tutorial if it's making me touch everything. They'll transform it from merely something that gets us into orbit into something that helps us once we're there. Now that you know where the comm is and where the stage is full and when it's empty, you'll have the information you need to place the RCC thrusters are found in the command. Oh. Move in the spaceship without rote. So I'm going to need to put the thrusters around where this center will be after there's no fuel. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna have to put the thrusters at the center and I'll have to figure out where the center will be 
before I get into space because I'm going to build them on the rocket. It's almost like I have a degree in this shit because I do. It's almost like my degree actually helped me outside of my work. Can you believe that? Can you believe my degree actually helped me somewhere? I can't believe this. Color me surprised. <laughs> Moving the spaceship without rotating is called translation. It is a useful kind of maneuver for several. It includes docking to another craft in order for translation to avoid unwanted rotation. You need to balance the thruster around the COM, center of mom. So the net sum of forces is balanced right on this natural pivot. For two equal sets of thrusters, each set should be equidistant from the comm. And for a single set, what we're doing here, they should be right around the comm itself. Okay, so we're going to have to do... What makes this complicated is that the comm changes during flight. So you need to place the thrusters at a compromise point between the wet comm and the dry comm. <laughs> Note that in career mode games, RC's thrusters aren't available. Rainbow! <laughs> Rainbow baby, I hope you had such a nice cooking stream. <laughs> Rainbow, I just went to space. Rainbow, do you know how orbiting the Earth works? Because if you don't, I can explain. I can explain how orbiting the Earth works, by the way. I just learned how orbiting Earth works. Would you like me to explain it to you sometime? <laughs> Raymu, my brain is hurting. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, everybody, coming in from Raymu's. I am doing something a little weird this week. I am doing something called Space Week because space is weird and I want to learn about space. Today, I'm playing Kerbal Space Program. Tomorrow, I'm playing Faster Than Light. Um, Friday, Saturday, I am doing some Outer Wilds Endurance. And Sunday, you can meet Raymu and I at Anime Impulse. Isn't that exciting? Reimu, baby, thank you so much for today. I hope you had a great stream. If you don't already follow Reimu, please do it, everyone. I'm learning how to build rockets, Reimu, so I can be rich and I can spoil you like the princess queen that you are. And I hope your viewers were spoiling you today as well, baby. Truly. All right, everybody. If you are just coming in from Reimu Endo stream, um, I'm still in the tutorial. And... There's a lot in this game. This is a very big brain game. So I am completely, I completely understand if this is not your vibe. I get it. But if you would like to see me read a lot of things and understand how space works. You know what I didn't know? Okay, I just have to say this. Did you know I learned... I thought when you went into space, you just keep floating forever. But you don't. You will fall back down. I thought the second you got into space, you just orbit naturally. Like, you either orbit or, or... Yeah, forever. That's what I thought. But I've learned you will always go down. You did not know that? No, baby. I'm a fox. I never went to school. I mean, uh, except for getting my theoretical aerospace degree in aerospace engineering and rocket building, obviously. Other than that, this is very wrong. Why do you think rockets went sideways? I didn't know rockets went sideways because every time I saw a rocket on TV, it just went straight up. You think I knew rockets went sideways until I played this? And even now, I'm only now understanding that it's going sideways to orbit the Earth. Baby. <laughs> you think I knew rockets went sideways? <laughs> I thought they just went up straight. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> you're giving me too much credit. It goes sideways. See? See? Thank you, Atlas. Thank you. Rockets go sideways. See? See, I'm not alone in this. Every single movie I've seen, the rockets goes up straight and it's all pretty and it's all nice. You're welcome.
I, I didn't know the sideways one. Thank you. You know, sometimes as a streamer, it feels like when people say stuff like, I can't believe you didn't know this. This is common knowledge. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not so common. <laughs> it's normal for people to think that it goes up. I think so too. You have to watch the launches past the first couple of minutes. I just want to see if the rocket explodes on Earth or not. That's it. That's it. Einstein wasn't lying. The theorists do be wrong. Thank you, Acceptable. Anyway, let us continue. What makes this complicated is that the comm changes during flight, as you saw. All right, so for everybody coming in, we are learning about the center of mom or the center of mass. So the way it works, we are currently building a several level rocket. I will explain for anybody coming in from Ramu's parachute where my little guy is, okay? This little guy right here is going to drop everything below. This right here rocket we're going to be using while we're in a high level in space, okay? And then eventually we'll drop this. And then we're going to have another one of these. And then we're going to have the engine that's going to get us to space. All right? So for this guy, the center of mom, I need to figure out where it is going to be so that I can properly maneuver my vehicle, my canoe, in space. Okay? So for example, this is showing me where the center of mass is going to be after there's no more fuel, right? So when there is no more fuel, the center of mass is going to be in the middle of right under the first black thing. And now that it's full, the center of mass is going to be half a line above. Okay, so this is the center of mass when it's dry. This is the center of mass when it's full, meaning I should be putting my thing around here in the middle i should be putting my guy somewhere around here correct maybe a little lower like here sort of i just need to see if i'm understanding this correctly acceptable thank you so much i really really appreciate it yes no yes sure yuff you've got the hang of it no worries, just launch. You'll eventually learn from your mistake. Don't forget to put the oxidizer back in. I mean, we haven't even done the rest, but for now, we're just... The thing is, Mr. Plane, I, when I play these kinds of games, I need to ask questions because... I could just have everybody tell me everything, right? I can just have you all tell me where to place things, but I need to understand why they go there. Because otherwise, when I'm going to be in higher difficulties, I don't want to just play the game by having you explain to me where things go. I want to understand where things go and why they go there. So here, I need to kind of understand why I'm doing the things I'm doing, why they're don't going places. Thank you, Crows, for the super. I did not understand what that means, but I appreciate you. Thank you. And Zerio, thank you for the soup up. Space Mom will persevere to expand to new frontiers of exploitation. Expand? Explore, exterminate, adapt. All right, let's get back into it. Now that you know where the calm is, when a stage is full, okay. What makes this complicated is that the calm changes during flight. So as you saw, you need to place the thruster at a compromise point between the wet calm and the dry calm. Okay, so. Wet calm. It's very sussy that I have to keep saying that. I'm so sorry. So the wet calm is... Yeah, half a line under this. Let's turn on angle snap to make the aligning of the thrusters part easier. Do that by... Okay, I want the 4x symmetry. Perfect. Um, then place a set of RV 105 RC thrusters. Okay. Everybody quiet. Everybody quiet. We are going to place these back. I'm just going to put them up here for now, just so we... Okay. Where is the wet? Oh, shit. Oh, I have to see how it's going to be with the... Okay. Oh, my God. This changes everything. Now it's higher up because of the...
Interesting. Do I need to figure out the center of mass before I place the thrusters or after I place the thrusters? You can tell me, you can tell me, you can tell me. They're very light. Mm, I guess I'll keep them on the thing for now then, just because, okay, fine, don't tell me, damn it. Okay, okay, okay. Where is... They're light so it doesn't matter with the thrusters, okay. One under the second line. Oh shit, fudge me. Screw this. I forgot. Okay. One under the second line. Basically, a line's worth under the second line is the middle. Okay, let's turn it down. I love the little detective music playing while my brain is braining. Okay. So this was the other center, and this is that center. So I have to put it like here. I have to put it at the top. This is what I said, no? I think it's a little low, huh? I think this is where it's gotta go. So it's down here and down there. So it's like here. I think it could go a little lower. You don't need to be too precise here, but I wish to be so precise. I wish to know it all. All right. Oh my goodness, my brain hurts. Tiny rocket. Right place to attach the tiny rocket propellant tank is just about the right place to attach this tiny rocket propellant tank. So this guy, if you don't get the placement quite right, you can use the gizmo. Click the offset. The offset? You'll be fine, mom. It's not rocket science. It is. It is. It is. the one above that but then why do I have to place it above when this is the center of the gravity why do I need to press it above and like this is where I'm supposed to press it this was like how we're supposed to do it okay where is the gizmo offset? I can't find it. Click the offset mode. This is toggle snap. Because when you run out of fuel, the, it will migrate up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's in the middle of both of them. The calm will change. It's in the. He basically told me it should be at the middle. This is tool move offset circle with the three lines this guy it's the move tool perfect click the offset mode then click an RCS drag one of the axis indicators to move it what What? Uh... No, really, you put it far from the center of mass. Really, Kogain? They told me to put it in the middle of the dry and the wet. Click the RCS. This guy. Hold on, what the hell? Yeah, sorry. Make sure I took the angle snap off. You will want to find adjustments that with snap turned on. Okay, click the offset mode. Mm 
Yeah, everything's unattached. Hold on. Everything's unattached now. All right, they're attached again. They're attached. They're attached. They're attached. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Don't worry about it. 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 Woo! Woo! All right. Move. Unsnap. Why do I need to change the thrusters? Oh! Okay, 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 okay. Why can't I just snap the thrusters on? Why did I have to use this? I thought they automatically would snap on. Hmm. Hold on, I just want to control Z to make sure it's like all good. Alright. He wants me to turn off my comm. Okay, okay, okay. I can use it. Alright. When you're all done, turn the comm indicator off. I already forgot how to turn the comm indicator off. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I already forgot. It's too much information for my small little mommy brain. Thorkata, thank you so much for the soup. On one small step, bottom left. Right. I remember the little shopping icon. Thank you, everybody. Oh, my God. It's just it's so much information at the same time. Oh, no, I'm not stressed out at all. That's just my tone. I always just sound kind of stressed as a person. <laughs> as a fox mom, I just always sound a little stressy. Lots of things on a craft use electric charge. That's what us scientists call rocket electricity. In order to keep your battery stopped up, you'll need a way of generating power. Now, some engines generate electricity while they're running, but you don't want to keep your engine running in orbit. Your orbit would get all kinds of messed up. You'll run out of propellant. Our command pod has some batteries built into it, but to be safe, you can add more batteries and you can add solar panels or other electricity generating items we can do both switch to the electrical category now to ensure we have angle snap turned on and are still okay so this snap is turned on we are in four times symmetry we'll use our part rotation skills to adjust the panels before placing them okay um question why did we Put the thrusters now before we did the rest of the stuff. Why did we put the thrusters now when we haven't even put the solar panels on yet? Shouldn't we put the thrusters after? Because now the weight of the ship is going to change. Doesn't really matter. Oh, is it because the batteries are too light? Okay, okay, okay. Good point. <laughs> I like to think. Okay, so basically, as long as things are really light, it doesn't really matter. But if I wanted to be a real scientist, I should have put the thrusters after. You're saying if I wanted to be a real science person, I should have put the thrusters after. I'm saying this tutorial is wrong. I'm just saying. I'm just, I just, I just got to tell you. They made a mistake. Awesome. Okay, just making sure I understand. Grab, hold it over the lower end of the fuel tanks. Not the lower end of the fuel tanks. Not all the way here. So this is one thing. This, okay, okay. And press A to rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, okay. It does seem like they want me to put it at the bottom of the, of the rocket. Nina, you are smarter. I am the smartest. Hold it over the lower end of the fuel tanks. Cool. They may want to use your feedback. You're welcome. Cool. All right. I'm just going to place these and seeing where they're, how they feel. Right. I'm snapped. I have four symmetry. He wants me to place them horizontally. Doesn't the bottom fall off? No, it's going to fall off later. I am keeping this into space with me. This is going to space with me. Um... After under it, another part's gonna fall fall off. And he does say, hold it over the lower end of the fuel tanks. So 
this is the lower end of the fuel tanks. Oh yeah, Grievous. I would like to get kind of better at this game so I can play KSP too. Okay, maybe not not low enough. W A S D. W A S D Q E. All right. Hold it over the lower end of the fuel tanks. Press A to rotate it to 90 degrees and click to place a set of them. Between the, the okay, oh, it's because I haven't done with the batteries yet. Oopsies, my bad, my bad, my bad. Cool. Where's my, hold on, move. Yeah. Looks nice, looks good, looks uh, looks right. Excellent work, you build a nice starter upper stage which will do well for some orbital exploration. Now we will need to work on getting it into orbit. Yeah. Now we'll need to build our lower stage. In comparison to the upper stage, it's quite simple. Just a couple of tanks and engine. That won't be enough alone, however, so we'll add some boosters. <sighs> okay, let's decouple. Let's decouple again. I am a scientist, by the way. I am science, by the way. And notice how when you add the decoupler, a fairing is placed around the engine. This will get jettisoned automatically when we stage the decoupler. Um, so basically this just hides this so this doesn't take damage when we're, when we're flying up, right? Since if we're flying up and this is being used, then, you know, is that why it just does the little protection? Carter, thank you so much for joining the membership. Okay, cool. So it just protects it so it's not, okay. Makes it aerodynamic. Yeah, so that way it's all the same kind of like easy. Cool, 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 cool. We need to add fuel tanks for our lower. Add two of the medium rocket propellants. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> How, by the way, I want to ask this question, but I'm genuinely afraid of the answer you're going to give me. Do y'all just eyeball the fuel? Like later on, am I just going to have to figure out how much fuel I need all the time? Experts calculated. I have no idea how... I love that. I have no idea how to do math in this game. I also have 2,000 hours. I use maximum all the time. Rockets are like clothes. When the bottom falls off, the real fun begins. It's a little... It's Monday, 3 p.m. Why are you like this? It's Monday, 3 p.m. Oh, wait a second, I missed the call. Give me just a moment. Hold on, hold on, I missed the call. Ah, give me a second. Sorry, I have a phone call to take. Give me a moment, I'm gonna get, my, get some coffee too. Give me a minute, give me a moment, give me a second. I am so sorry. Give me a moment. I will be right back.
Hello, sorry for the delay. I missed two phone calls. I was ordering something and now I got phone calls for it and I missed it. And when I called back, they didn't pick up the phone. So I waited a bit and then I called back again and they didn't pick up the phone. And yeah, here we are. Here we are, mom, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I'd be not doing tutorials, but with the way this game is, I might have to do all the tutorials before I even attempt space flight. Hmm. Let me grab a blanket. Remember before I was too cold? Now I'm too hot. Remember? Oh, you're almost there. I think it would be really fun to play the game after we do the science stuff. I think after we do the science one, we'll have a good time. Time. It's been fun learning with you. I'm happy. I'm having a lot of fun. I think you can tell. Now we need to add the fuel tanks to our lower stage. Add two of the medium rocket propellants. Also, I'm having a little snack. Mm. So. In the future, I will be the ultimate rocket scientist. Oh yeah, Larks. I think that's the best part. I think that's the best part, right? Just learning the game, trial and error, doing your best. I can't wait for me to have fun. These aren't fuels. <sighs> Fuel? Oh my God, you are correct. You are correct. These are not fuels. Oh my God. It would have been funny. Okay. Fuel booster and fuel. All right. Let's put two fuel tanks. So in the future in this game, I will unfortunately have to calculate how much fuel I will need. I'm worried your ears don't fit your helmet. Would have probably worked anyway. Oh my God. Do you want to try it? Do you want to try if it's going to work? <laughs> oh, I might not let me press next though. Derp, I can be anyone's mom. Mommy is a state of mind. For our lower stage, we need an engine that is a sustainer. That's an engine that burns from liftoff until we well after the boosters separate. Hold on. We need an engine that sustains until the booster. Let's get scientifical. Rocket engine performance is measured by specific impulse or ISP. <sighs> and the ISP of an engine changes as the amount of atmospheric pressure around it changes. Okay. Just as the upper stage needing uh, needed an engine that is good at the low air pressure of high altitude. Yes. The lower stage will need boosters, which are powerful at the higher air pressure of the low altitude of the launch. And to help carry the rocket through the transition from launch to upper stage, it will need a sustainer engine, which usually sits between boosters and upper stage engine from a performance perspective, having a wide range between the two. Hold on. <laughs> Calm down. Okay, so ISP is miles per gannon. Basically, rocket engine performance is measured by miles per, gan uh, per uh, gallon. Okay. At the top, we needed a different engine than at the bottom. That makes perfect sense. That completely, completely makes sense. At the top, we have a very hyper-specialized... Yeah, I said gannon instead of gallon, huh? <laughs> so at the top, we need a specialized engine. The bottom engine is doing a lot of things at the same time. The bottom engine is a waitress and the busboy and the, the line cook. So the bottom engine needs to function and do several things at the same time versus the top engine. It's, you know, it's looking really pretty and it's doing its best and it only makes drinks as the bartender. Cool. 
So. Because look, the lower engine needs boosters that are powerful at high air pressure of the low altitude, and they need to help carry the rocket through the transition. So they're doing several things at once. Cool. The sustainer engine is decent at all altitudes, but not super good everywhere. That's that's great. That's I like that. Which makes sense, right? We need something that can do several things. It's not going to do several things amazingly, right? It unlike, Unless it's me, I can do several things amazingly, right? Like, I'm a streamer, an entertainer, a fox mom, a scientist, a food eater, a food chewer, a food reviewer. Sounds like you have some trauma from a previous job. You haven't heard my stories about crying in the fridge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Pizza Rocket, the most important thing we learned is that sometimes we will need a specialized engine in whatever we're doing, and other times we don't need a specialized agent. A uh, specialized engine. Okay. LT Swivel. Considered a breakthrough in the LVT series due to its thrust vectoring feature. Deflect its thrust to aid in craft control. All these added mechanics, however, make for slightly smaller, heavier engine. Cool. I am, I'm trying to learn. At its default thrust level, the swivel is too powerful for the rocket we're grading. So we're going to need to lower the thrust as we start. Um... And for the ascent profile, we're going to teach you in the go for orbit tutorial. So you need to lower its thrust level. There we go. Boom. Uh, this isn't a good, this isn't as good a solution as making a smaller, lighter engine with the thrust level we want. But well, there are so many options. Is that how you get the better engines? Do you just discover, do you make money, get points, do science? Because yeah, I agree. I think the less things I have to worry about when I launch my rocket, the better. I don't want to think about anything when I launch my rocket. It's just right now, this is all I have, so we gotta make do. You research them with science. Nice, 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 nice. Cool. Then we're definitely gonna do career mode. Oh, wait a second. Previously, when I did the thrust, I lowered the thrust while I was flying. Before takeoff, right? I lowered my thrust to two thirds, but I could have lowered my thrust before we flew. Or are those different things? Is it the same thing? Or are those kind of similar? There's just more one way to do it. Okay, it's the same thing. Perfect. Same thing, but here I, okay. Here I can do it per engine. I mean, technically the only engine that's being used is the one that's like at the bottom, right? The only thruster that's thrusting is like, this guy isn't gonna work. So I'm uh, sorry. I mean like this guy here isn't gonna work until this guy's done working. The thrust limiter makes it so that 100% thrust in flight is actually oh, okay yeah 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 okay i get it i get it um so now when i start the flight if this is at 65 i think you explained it really well with a percentage if this is at 65% next time i let's do 66 for the no let's do 80 for the easy math so Let's do 90 for the easy math. <laughs> so let's say it's at 90. And from now on, if, if I start at here and they ask me to go to 9 tenths, I will have to go on my little thruster and put it at 90. But from now on, if I start at 90, that wait, no. 
do easy 50 for easy math yeah yeah, yeah that's probably better huh? okay 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 whoa 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 let's say next time i have to go somewhere the game says you need to put it at 50 percent thruster power so if it's at 100 i will manually have to put it at 50 percent thruster power meaning if they ask for 25 percent thruster power i will have to manually go down to 25 on the thing but from now on if i already put it at 50 and they ask for 50 percent, it's already at 50 percent. sort of i kind of get it i don't understand how to explain it but i kind of get it and i know you're gonna say nina if you don't understand it simply enough you never get it but i get it sort of i sort of get it i kind of get it i just i'm sorry i can't explain it I'll make a mistake and I'll figure it out, okay? So what if we lose a few people? What's death in the face of progress? Ryoka, that's well explained. It's not like a rocket science. You're right. It's not at all like rocket science. Nice, you have the core of your rocket completed. We'll be adding boosters. We'll add two boosters symmetrically, so I have to put symmetry. So we keep our craft balanced, and to make sure we don't lug the useless dry mass of the boosters around after they burn out, we'll attach them using decouplers. Ooh. This time, however, we'll use radial decouplers, so the boosters can sit beside our lower stage core instead of... So we're gonna put the, 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 the thingies on the side. We're gonna put the boosters on the side. Do we need boosters? Because it's harder to fly Is it because gravity is stronger on Earth? No. So we need boosters because we need to like go quicker, right? We need to go up faster. We need to like breach the thing. But then we have a lot more mass. So we need the boosters to help us go up because basically like we're bigger, the rocket's bigger. You're fighting gravity, but also air drag and also our weight. Okay, okay, okay. So the more my rocket gets big, the more I need boosters. And I only need boosters until I get like past the atmosphere or whatever it is so that it doesn't keep weighing me down and then I can get rid of it. And as we burn fuel, the rocket gets lighter. Cool, 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 cool. Dragon, thank you for the super. Science cannot move forward without heat. My brain is braining. My brain is braining. Oh, that makes sense. The bigger your rocket, the harder it is to take off initially. So you're basically giving yourself the push. Radial decoupler. Oh my god, nice! Near the bottom of the lowest tank on the lower stage. Nice! Oh my god, I'm doing it, baby. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Look at my radial decoupler. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on, let me just try calling back again. Uh, very, very quickly. Give me just one second, okay? All right, we are good. 
All is good. All is good. All is fine. We are good. All is fine. We are good. The heavier the rocket, the more boosters you need. The more boosters you have, the heavier your rocket is. That's how you end up with a monstrosity. What's the heaviest rocket you've all sent into space, huh? Caesar, I will crash. We will burn and we will die. Seven hundred fifty ton rocket. A Saturn V replica. That's crazy. A thousand two hundred eighty six tons. I crashed my game by the number of parts. Oh, my God, I love that. I love that for you. Really, Pendulum? Oh my god. Without mods, I think around 2k ton, my computer was crying. What do you call a manual decoupler? A divorce? <laughs> Laughing slowly fades into sobbing. I'm sorry! But divorce is not a bad thing. Sometimes divorce is fog. No? Your brain is wrinkling so hard, it's twice as loud as crumpling up aluminium foil. I love it when my favorite fox bomb on the net gets brain blasted. My brain is feeling real, real good. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna play this game again next week, because I have somewhere to be tonight. I am going to dinner with a friend of mine, and I haven't been able to see her for dinner for a while, so... Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna get to the game today. I think we're only gonna be in tutorial hell, but... I will play this game more, and it's the reason that I have to wash my hair, baby. I'm stinky. I haven't washed my hair since New Year's. I am stinky, stinky, stinky. I'm a little stinky. I've showered since New Year's, I think. <laughs> but I haven't washed my hair since New Year's. I'm stinky. I'm stinky. I haven't washed my hair, my tails, my everything, okay? I'm stinky. Stomp. Stop! Stop! Stop, Stinky! Stinky good. Stinky good. Alright. Uh, now you have the core of your rocket. Blah, 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 blah. Next. More boosters. <laughs> Do you recognize yourself in here? More boosters. XD. More boosters, XD, WTF, BBQ. <laughs> more. More. More boosters. More. More. Rar. <laughs> I can tell this game was made in the early 2000s. Not so Deadpool, thank you for the soup up. I thought Uranus wasn't a planet anymore. No, that was just your mom. No, I'm sorry. Okay, that didn't work. That did not work. I'm sorry. That... I tried so far. I know that's Pluto, baby. I know. I just wanted to say your mom. Because Uranus, your mom, get it? So the joke is... Uranus sounds like your anus, which is your butthole, okay? And when I said your anus is no longer a planet, but your mom is, I'm insinuating that your mother has a lot of extra weight uh, which is a very common joke used by children on the playground to kind of insult each other because they think that it is insulting to you if your parent weighs a certain amount it's not what's insulting to you is that you know it's a lot more harmful if you say you are stupid and not your parent is stupid or you are not a rocket scientist you know don't explain the joke if i don't explain the joke how are you gonna know my joke was funny I think the pinnacle of humor is explaining the joke, right? Because if you don't get the joke, it's not that my joke was bad. It's just that you didn't get it. So I must explain the joke so that you are in the joke with me. You know what I mean? I'm 
done with the funny. <laughs> nor. 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 No, no, don't be. That's so funny. You're welcome. See, now that I've explained the joke to you, are you feeling like you're going to laugh a little bit more at it? Do you understand why I said the joke that I said now? She went from Nor. <laughs> I'm crying. Can I explain it a little more? I think that was a good explanation. It's okay. Don't worry. I'll explain other jokes in the future. Okay? Don't worry. I can explain all the jokes to you. Can you explain the joke again? Mom, I wasn't listening. Can you explain again? Mom, please. Mom, please. I wasn't listening. Mom, please. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. You have given me the power. I will now explain <laughs> every joke ever. Thank you, everybody. I had my ears up. Commencing super chat. Hello, mother. That joke was very funny. Please feed me more humorous words into my brain pipe and request. Thank you, Kyle. I will remember to make more jokes at you. Not so Deadpool. Thank you. Nina makes no mistakes. Well, children are a mistake. Explain it to me like I'm a rocket scientist. So basically, when you have a joke, right? Um, your punchline of the joke is your parachute, right? Because, no, your punchline of the joke is your little person. And if the joke lands, your little person has to be alive inside the spaceship. Now, the thing is, if the spaceship lands and your little person died inside of the cabin your joke still works depending how they died right if they died because of your fault in the cabin your joke doesn't work but if they died just because i don't know maybe they just died of old age or something then that's fine your joke still works um now every joke needs to be able to get up high in the air so how do you get the joke in the air you have to put thrusters, right? And an engine that's going to go and put the joke up in the air. Now, 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 now. How do you keep the joke in the air? Um, that's your delivery. Exactly. Your delivery is your fuel tanks and your jet thrusters. And you got to make sure that you can give a good setting and delivery for the joke when it comes to this. Okay. And then... Eventually, what you do with the joke is as you perform your stand-up joke, eventually there are parts of the joke that you can get rid of or you can tighten certain parts of the joke to make the punchline hit a little bit quicker, a little bit better, a little bit faster. So that is when you decouple, right? When you are creating your joke in your brain, sometimes you'll have to throw certain elements away. Sometimes you'll have to maybe embellish the truth a little bit. Sometimes you'll have to embellish the truth a lot. Uh, we in the science field call that lying so sometimes you will lie to make your joke funny and that is when you use the decoupler to anyway okay i'm i'm done i'm sorry i tried to take this joke and then i lost my spaceship <laughs> i lost my spaceship somewhere it started orbiting mars hi lucky bunny the science of comedy <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Nina. Now we will never joke again. I have never said one joke. Name one time I was funny. Bet you can't. I have never been funny, not even once. I'm a scientist. For Christ's sake. I'm a scientist. Scientists aren't funny. Right now, you're just being nice. You're just being nice. Stop. Stop! You're just being nice. Come on. We all know mothers aren't funny. Right? <laughs> what if I take the joke further and say we all know women aren't funny? <laughs> Today we learned a very important lesson. I have learned that the Earth... That, that we can orbit. No, I have learned the power of gravity. 
and you have learned that women can be funny sometimes. You're welcome. See, today has been a lesson for all of you. I have learned. I have learned how to fly rockets into space. And you have learned that women can sometimes be funny. You're welcome. <laughs> she understands the gravity of her serious. Maybe I'm a theoretical comedy engineer, right? <laughs> My eyes have been open to female comedy. I'm just trying to show you that sometimes women can funny. So that you know. I'm also trying to show you how to make a rocker. A rocket. Rocker. Why did I say rocker? What's a rocker? <laughs> Alright, can we continue, please? Sorry. I drank my coffee, so now my coffee's going into my bloodstream and I'm getting and I'm getting a lot of energy. Women are theoretically in theory maybe funny sometimes. But by that logic, everyone in theory can sometimes be funny sometimes theoretically. I just test my theories often. I know it's hard to believe, but I throw out a lot of jokes. Most of them <laughs> blow up and burn and explode before they ever reach orbit. But sometimes I am lucky enough through enough trial and error, my joke goes into, into, into the space, atmosphere, stratosphere, and orbits you. 10 seconds ago, you never, you said you never joked. I lied! <laughs> it was a lie! I bamboozled you! Remember I told you the first step of humor is to lie. You have to lie. No, all, all jokes aside. <laughs> I lied! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> You know what else I lied about? My theoretical aerospace degree. I am not a theoretical aerospace engineer. I am a theoretical aerospace rocketeer. I lied. By the way, my secret husband has been playing the game the whole day. It wasn't me. It was him. My secret husband has been playing for me. I'm just reacting. I'm just talking over it. Some people are funny most of the time. Most people are funny some of the time. No one is funny all the time. I don't know. I think some people can be. Thank you so much, though. Nina is a mirage maiden. Thank you, Envy. All right, all jokes aside, though, I say without joking, I think the funniest jokes is sometimes how do i say this hold on how do i sometimes the most mundane things are so funny no like sometimes i'll see something happen in the real world and i think oh my god i could not have made that joke in my head funnier than what happened sometimes just People doing the most random things and just existing is funnier than I, I could ever write or I could ever think or I could ever... There's, there's no way I could set up something to that extent. Then please make sure these two pounds reach him. No. Not giving my secret husband money. Come on. No. No. Oh my god, the synergy between you and your secret husband, right? Comedy as bad as Apollo 13. I don't know what that means. Is that a dark joke? Is that is that the one that blew up? Because if so, that's a pretty that's a pretty unsavory joke. But you know, it's the internet. I get it. Okay, can we please continue? That's the one that blew up. That's not a great joke. Oh, but the astronauts lived. Okay, the joke is better. Everyone lived. All right, that's fine. Anyway, let us continue the game, right? Please, I'm trying not to get canceled over my humor. Please, I'm trying real hard. Okay? 
I'm trying real hard not to get canceled over my sense of humor. And I would really, really appreciate it if you, um, you know. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> of course I'm trying! Anyway. Add a pair of RT-10 hammer, Usher Beast to the decoupler. Okay, okay, okay. Hammer. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. We gotta go. I need to just read about this. Hold on. Hey, Nina, have you seen the movie Apollo 13? I don't think I have. I'm not really into space things. The last space movie I saw was uh, Prometheus, and I cried because scary space aliens. Lisa Comediant confirmed. I see with you, George. Yeah, I'm trying to remember when, when was that. Oh my God, look at this little man. Look at this little distinguished gentleman. Look at him. Look at him little waddling around. Look at him. Apollo 13 would be a good Prometheus underrated. It scared me so much that I had a, I had a, what is it called? A stress cry. I cried, I think two times during the movie because I was so scared. And then, all right, I'm just going to give you the, the quick preface of this preface. So I was with my two friends that I worked with. Uh, we were all leaders, you know, and, um, the movie ended and my friend sitting in the middle looked at both me and the other girl and he was like, hey, this was really fun. We should do this again. We should watch a scary movie again. And all I remember was I looked at him. I looked at the girl and I just need everybody to, to understand that the lights turned on. Everybody was getting up from the movie theater and I Bald. I didn't just cry. I wasn't like, uh, uh, uh. I don't know why. I just went like, ah! and I started crying my eyes out. It was just the pressure of like the movie ending, me holding in all the stress, my friend suggesting we watch it again when I cried like three times during the movie. I just started bawling my eyes out. I just, I legitimately just... What like, <laughs> and I just kept crying like that nonstop. And everybody was looking at me because it was the end of the movie. The lights were turning on. Everybody was looking at me and they're like, oh, I hope she's okay. <laughs> you can laugh. It's funny. You can laugh. <laughs> you can laugh. I, I think back about it now and I'm laughing, but it was exactly an ugly cry. It was exactly an ugly cry. The reason is I need to prepare mentally before I do anything that involves horror. And my friends said it wasn't scary. So I never prepared mentally for how scary and like emotionally daunting and terrifying the movie was going to be. I don't think they did it meanly. I don't think they really knew it. You're curious about the movie? Watch it. It's called Prometheus. But it just, I think for me, it was how stressed I was. I didn't want to leave the movie theater. It just, it was stressful. I was always scared something was going to happen. It freaked me out. Anyway, it was a great cry. I think about it sometimes. You're welcome for the story. Prometheus was scary. It was scary to me. I am a baby. I'm just a baby. That's what scares me. It's that it's a thriller. Is that you never know when the next scare is coming. I've never seen Alien. It's okay to be a weenie sometimes. I'm not a baby. Do I understand the concept of space or of aliens? Aliens. I don't know why I said aliens. If you're jaded like me, then you'll find a lot of Prometheus funny. Like when the android's head get ripped out of nowhere. I barely remember that, Dan. I just remembered it was all very scary. All right, everybody. 
I just want to read the difference between these two, okay? So, I'm trying to understand the difference between a fuel tank and an engine and then the solid fuel booster. So, I just want to read about this. So, oh, it weighs less. Okay, okay, okay. So, a fuel tank plus a liquid engine fuel. Sorry, or a fuel engine. Like, these weigh less. Well, sort of, like, I guess. This one weighs a lot. No, never mind. Solid fuel booster cannot be throttled. So it's basically a firework. Okay, okay. So this guy is always going top speed. This guy is always going top speed. He never doesn't go top speed. He is constantly going top speed until he cannot go top speed anymore. But this guy, I can control him. I can fix him. I can change them. Yeah, so they basically thrust up high, but then that's it. Cool, 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 cool. Unlike the LF engines where you can adjust the throttle during flight, once you light an SRB, it burns at constant thrust till it's out of fuel. We can, however, use the throttle limiter, as we did on the swivel, to set that constant thrust before we roll. Click on the SRBs and change its thrust limiter to 50. Ooh. I have to see if it changes for both of them. Yes, it does. I guess because they're symmetrical. It changes for both of them. Uh, yeah, you can only adjust them in the editor. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes it thrust half as hard, but twice as long. I... I, I wish I had something funny to say. I wish I had something funny to say. I just... Yes? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I wish I could I could think of something funny. <laughs> I wish I was funnier. <laughs> Don't you wish I was funnier? <laughs> Don't you sometimes wish I was funnier? Um, Gohan, thank you so much for the super fun rocketry fact. You can spit harder than most electric rockets thrust. They won't get you off the ground but accelerate you in space. Yeah, 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 that's why we got this little, little guy. Right? This little guy. This little guy. Sometimes silence says more than words. Oh, I know. That's why I talk. Impossible. VTubers, VTubers can be literate. I mean, I'm barely literate. You've heard how I'm reading. I'm barely paying attention to the text. Thank you, Orbital. I appreciate it, baby. She hasn't noticed the shape of a rocket. Oh, I've noticed. Aren't all rockets sort of phallic? That's the whole point, right? Isn't the whole reason why men build rockets was to just build a giant penis and launch it somewhere? You know when you're a kid, you just draw little penises everywhere. And then when you're an adult, you launch little penises into space. Sorry, sorry, average size penises into space. That's it. Obviously, I get it. Yeah. Pretty sure that's where the first design is. Pomu, I'm still in the tutorial. We have reached the space. Pomu, I'm not gonna lie. I wanna see you play this. Pomu, I just have to explain to you how much my brain hurts. I've read all day. All right, Pomo, before you play this game, do you know how orbits work? Do you know why the moon orbits the Earth? Do you know why spaceships orbit? You're still in the tutorial. Bitch, you play this. I want to see how you're going to do when, when you play this. I've barely ever seen you read on stream, baby girl. <laughs> I've barely seen you read text on stream. I love you, Pomu. I hope your appointment went well. I love you so much. Um, Pomu, did you know that? Um, so I just learned this. I assumed, okay, okay, hear me out, Pomu, hear me out. When you launch into space, I assumed that the second that you reach space, you instantly float. 
but that's not true. You will fall back down immediately. Can you, did you know that? I didn't know that. I thought you just instantly launched into space and like started orbiting the earth. If you just got out to space. But you don't. I have learned so many things about space today. I am a space mom. Gone are the days of phallic shaped spacecraft. Humanity now demands the new era of yonic shaped spacecraft. Ooh, that could be interesting. I'd like that. No one that has not played this game ever knows, including actual space engineers. It's true, Window. It's true. Even after you leave the Earth's atmosphere, you can still fall back, right? I love how it looks like you're using your helmets, Mike. Psh, Commander Fox Mom. Psh, Commander Fox Mom. Okay, where were we? Sorry, I got excited because Pomo was here. Ah, I love Pomo. Don't tell her though, I feel this way. Unlike liquid fuel, where you can adjust full throttle. Okay, so the difference with the thrusters, I can only adjust them before the flight. Cool. Um, cool. We can, however, use the throttle limiter as we did on the swivel. Oh, change it to thrust 50. Remember when I said I teach you how to make this pod and thumper craft from constructor, construction basics survivable? Well, this thrust adjusting is how that could be done. Although you'd have to put a decoupler on it. We already put the decoupler. Right now, the SRBs have flat pancake tops, which is simply not a good look. Leave their pancakes alone! And bad aerodynamically. Let's fix that by adding a pair of nose cones. Wow. Everything really is shaped like that, isn't it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn, I'm sorry for this. Um, yeah, you can add a pair using symmetry. Perfect. Oh, this is less bad. Okay, perfect. This is less phallic. Um, this is chat control to Major Mom. Major Mom reporting for duty. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Well, we're on the tab in the toolbox. Let's add some fins too. Fins comes in various sizes and styles. Yes, that we know. Since these fins are control surfaces, they also add some extra control authority when low in the atmosphere, where the air is thick enough for them to have the helpful effect. Add the R48 winglets in four times symmetry near the bottom of the lowest fuel tank. In the lowest stage, make sure they don't intersect the decouplers. Oh, because if they do, the decoupler won't be able to. Okay, 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 okay. Winglets. R8 winglet. Okay. If they do overlap those parts, any flight will be interesting, but exceptionally short. So, basically... Somebody remember how to rotate, how I rotate? Near the bottom of the lowest fuel tank. And I have to make sure WASD. Is it? 4X, that's what I got. Oh, oopsies. Sorry, I forgot. I thought I put it. Put it in the middle one. Oh, wait, 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Isn't 4X symmetry? This is 2X symmetry, isn't it? Isn't this 4X symmetry? Right. So these guys are going to fall off. And then when these guys fall off, Don't move it over to the booster, then change it to 2x. It goes to 2x if you try to put them on the booster. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's a little, yeah. So. We are getting the winglets. So then when this thing falls off, 
I just need to make sure they don't intersect the decoupler. WASD, you said, right? Long, everybody. I think this looks fine. Right? Upside down. Uh, uh, um, um, no. N no. N no. No. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> X is the shortcut for symmetry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, not at all upside down. You, what, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so. Could I have put them lower? Or is that... The lower it goes, the easier it is to control, right? Oh, I think that was the lowest I could have gone. That's okay. Only okay. You don't think it looks incredible, amazing, life-changing, show-stopping? Damn. I feel it's a little too close to the thruster. I don't like that. Like, it feels too close to the thruster, does it not? The boosters are misaligned. Yup, 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 yup. I think I gotta change the thrusters. <laughs> My god. It's almost like I gotta think in this video game, you know? It's almost like I gotta think in this video game, baby. It's tough. Mama's gotta use her brain. This looks better. This looks better. This looks better. You can grab the decouplers while the boosters are still attached. Oh, good idea. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see, I see. Thank you. Yeah, this is better. This is better. They are misaligned. They're fine. They're fine. They're barely even misaligned. They're barely even misaligned. Look at them. And I'm learning how to press X. Huh? Okay, sometimes it just looks like that. Sometimes it just looks like that. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes, sometimes it just looks like that, okay? Oh, wait, ah. I, I just don't know what to tell you, honey. I just don't know what to tell you. Sometimes it just looks like that, okay? Yeah, I think as long as everything's symmetric, it should be fine, right? Right? Hold on, I keep forgetting. Oh my god, look at the little... Look at them running around. 
<laughs> Sometimes it just looks like that. My mom talking about my reflection. Hold on. Why is it not letting me turn it again? Hold on. Whoa. whoa what did I do wrong? D S W. Uh oh. Oh. It's almost straight. Also, your mother when looking at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know you might not be happy with this, but this fills me with joy. This makes me happy. Excellent. We've got all the components on our basic orbital rocket, but let's run through a few extra things before we call it a day. Firstly, we should review the staging stack to check the order of actions and parts displayed here. It's luckily I've highlighted this for you because the SRBs are set to fire before the sustainer and that just won't do. You won't have enough thrust to get off the pad that way. Move the swivel staging icon down on the same stage as the RSBs. Know that the automatically created staging sequence would work if we did not want the long burning sustainer to ignite at the same time as that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I need a moment. We should review the staging process. Okay. Let me figure it out, okay? We should review the staging process. The OS Air Bs. So this, right? Or, oh, ah, my nipple. Okay, that, I meant like the nipple cover. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the cover of the stuff. <laughs> Because it looks like a nipple. Oh, I effed up. I screwed it. I screwed it. I screwed it. I'm sorry, everyone. My God, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stupid game. I love this game. Just control Z. I did control Z and then it clipped, it did more. It was bad. It was bad, I needed to do it again. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Me. What the hell is an SRB? <laughs> what the hell is an SRB? Oh, right, the nipple covers. I forgot. Cover. Thank you, everybody. Solid rocket booster. Okay, that's the SRB. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. SRBs are set to fire before the sustainer. I'm trying to understand why this is a problem. Because isn't this guy supposed to... Where do you program the rocket? Right here. Um... I need them all three at the same time. Okay, 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 okay. That, okay, you don't have enough thrust. Okay, okay, I misunderstood them. You want them all at the same time. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Parachute, check. Um, This guy popping off, dropping the bottom, check. Uh, ooh. Hold on a second, Choto Amate. Then we have What is this? Okay, then we have my small liquid fuel. Then there's the... Where's the big liquid fuel? 
pour all the liquid fuels into like this place. All my liquid fuels are here because it's only showing me. Sorry, average liquid fuel. Put your liquid engine below the separators. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me figure it out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is there only showing me one of my fuel tanks? Is what I'm confused about. It's only showing me the small fuel tank, but not the big one. Four is the second. No, four is this guy. Four is... Yeah, I have a big fuel tank. I have a small fuel tank. Because it's the engine. But that's the engine. Ah, I didn't mean to... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to understand how we got here. This is a small and a big... Okay. So... Does it no longer... Count... As a fuel tank because it's now has an engine attached to it? Because this was just two fuel tanks with an engine. Staging doesn't show fuel tanks. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So staging just shows your stages of things. And a fuel tank is not your stage. Okay, 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 that makes sense. All right. So it's not showing my fuel. Oh, okay, I understood. I understood. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, okay, okay. So parachute, my last stage... This pre-last stage, this is after I, like, am falling back down into orbit or something. Then, this is my, my rocket. This is, like, right as I get into space. And then from here on, we have... So, these guys, okay. These guys are going to fall off. So, I need to move this, I think, up. Okay. Hold on. Let me explain it. I need these three to work at the same time, so they need to be on the same stage. And these guys need to come out after. Your decoupler! It's fine! Look, 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 it'll come back up. Don't worry about it. Let him chill, let him chip. Mom! Your decoupler! Mom! Put it back! Mom! Put it back! It's fine, it's fine. Let him, let it, let it, let it, let it cook. Let it cook. Let it cook, baby, let it cook. There we go. <laughs> mom, put it back, mom, stop. Okay, so these decouplers have to be higher up and then this guy goes down. So, okay, okay, okay. Give me a moment. Let me cook. Let me think. Let me figure it out. I need these guys to go at the same time. Which is going to work because they're in the, the last stage. So when the rocket begins, these guys fire up. Then these guys get lost. Then this thing gets lost. Then eventually this thing gets lost and then parachute. Oh my God. Okay. I guess... The game doesn't think I got it right, though. The game doesn't think I got it right. Because it's not letting me go into the next. Maybe you broke the limiters by replacing the engine. Mm. This one has a one on it like this. Maybe I forgot to re-lower them. Check the SRB thrust. Oh, right. It has to be back down to 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. I'm hoping that's the problem. Yeah, okay. Basically, when I did the new SRBs, it completely perfect. Oh, my God. Finally, pick up the pod and rotate it 90 degrees around the vertical axis. 
We'll rotate the ship, not just the, the pod. Okay, okay. Finally, pick up the pod and rotate it 90 degrees around the vertical axis. Press Q or E. This will rotate the ship, not just in the VAB, but also sets its rotation when we go to the launch pad. So that our desired flight headed off east, compass 90, will be a matter of steering the pitch. You want the windows facing the exit. That exit. Right? How does that work? Why do I want the windows facing the exit? Hi, Massimo. Thank you so much for tuning in, baby. Cool. All right. I think we're ready. We always make every effort to ensure our brave crew survives. And hopefully you will take the same stance in your space program. It doesn't always work out that way, of course, but it's the thought that counts. At least those of us not on the rocket at the time. With that in mind, let's set up an abort action group for your craft for use in case of emergency. Note that in career mode, you'll have to upgrade to the VAB, blah, blah, blah. Click on the turquoise action groups button. It's part of a cluster of three buttons. These guys? No. Click on the turquoise action groups button on the left of the toolbar. These guys, right? They're all actions. Oh my god. Yeah, there's way more. It's three. He made a mistake. I found a mistake in the game. Action groups let you assign the functions of one or more parts to a single specific key. There are some default groups. We're going to set up an abort action group. It's triggered by spacing backspace or by clicking the big red abort button in flights. It slides down from the left. First, click on the abort button in the action group. Great. Now click on the decoupler and add its decouple action. Okay. Abort decoupler. So this, or right below the pod. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Click on the decoupler right above the pod, okay. Then click on each liquid engine in turn and assign their shutdown. Oh my God, my brain hurts. You have to admit you never do that? Good, because I'm already brain hurty. Click on each Lick, okay, add its decouple. Perfect. So, aboard decoupling. Click on each liquid engine in turn and assign their shutdown functions to the group. Liquid engine is the guy that's hiding here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shutdown engine. And then the other guy. The yellow tank is not an engine, but it says Terial liquid fuel engine. It says liquid fuel engine. So when you say it's not an engine, but then the game tells me it's an engine. Okay, cool. That's why I try not to look at the chat too, too much because uh, it's okay. You click the right one. Yeah, because I'm thinking it through, baby. Sorry, one man who's confused. Sorry, baby. It happens. Click on each liquid engine in turn and assign their shutdown functions to the group. Okay, so the next engine is this bad boy. And I'm shutting it down. Finally, click on one of the radial decouplers and assign the decouple... Okay. One of the radial decouplers, this bad boy. And assign decoupled the to the group since these replace with symmetry applying the action okay um now when you trigger the abort action in flight the engines will shut down or if they can't shut down be decoupled the capsule will separate from the rest of the ship and it should be safe to land by itself um i want to talk about what just happened is this 
in case of emergency. If we don't get into space, I can basically press abort and it'll get rid of everything. And then I can just use my parachute, basically. This is what this is for. This is never going to be used. Well, it's just for me to learn. So let's say there's an emergency and I made a big mistake and I'm flying off and I don't want to lose my little guy. I can instantly get rid of everything, do my parachute. You're so smart. You're learning rocket science. Let's try to try to save Jeb in case of problems. It's to save crew, which can die in career mode. Cool. There's a reset anyway. Oh, well, damn. Cool. And here we are. Your orbital rocket is ready to fly. Ninor Roquet. Holy shit. I'm not gonna lie, that broke my brain. Also, I gotta go soon because I need to shower and get ready. Um, I feel, oh, press save. Oh my God, oh my God, did I forget to save my rocket? Thank you, everybody. I am space. <laughs> um, that was crazy. I'm going to be thinking about this game. Oh, we have to launch it. Oh my God. Wait a second. We have to launch it. Ah. I left the tutorial. Because I thought it was the end of the tutorial. I didn't realize I'd have to freaking launch my ship. I I left the tutorial. It's okay. I think next time when I start, I could just re-go straight from there. I'm sorry, I have to go. Today was a short stream because I have to get ready for um I have to get ready for a dinner. I have to wash my hair. I have to get everything done. I have to meet my friend. I'm sorry, everybody. But I had so much fun. I'm going to play this again next week. I'll see if I can do maybe a, a gorilla for this game. I don't know if I'm going to have time. But maybe Sunday after Anime Impulse I can do a gorilla. I don't know yet. This was really, really fun. I get it more. Like now that. Now that I've played it. I understand things more. I think the game and you, everybody, has been really, really great at explaining everything, making sure that I don't, you know, I get it. I get it more and I'm excited to keep playing and I'm excited to keep trying. And yeah, I know it's only still in the tutorial, but frankly, we'll probably be in the tutorial again next time. Honestly, I think probably two streams is going to be easily tutorial streams because I want to understand everything and I want to kind of baby brain it, take my time. Um, but yeah, it's fun. I'm going to think about the game nonstop. It feels that way, Orbital. It feels like I'm mostly understanding the hard stuff. And then once I start playing, it'll kind of make sense for me even more. Koi, I'm just learning. I've seen other streamers where every wrong backseated with wrong advice. Hmm. I think it's because I'm also trying to think about the game, right? I think it's different when you just read chat's advice, but I'm actually trying to understand, which is kind of hard with my baby brain. But yeah, there was no hard stuff yet, but there will be. I mean, I got to start slowly. I'm a, I'm a baby brain. I'm, I'm a small brain. But yes, we will be playing more. We're going to put things into practice. Uh, for anybody who is new here, hello. I am doing Space Week. And tomorrow I am playing... Faster Than Light. It's going to be my first time playing Faster Than Light. I have played Into the Breach. So I am aware with the company. I am aware with these types of games. I just haven't played Faster Than Light. I'm excited. I heard it's also kind of a little bit of a brain game. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. And uh, really, Xora. Oh my God, imagine I make one before you do. <laughs> FTL is more than Into the Breach. Good. There will be Stellaris one day, Seer. Just not yet. I already played Crusader Kings 3 on stream. 
Um, and we finally did get into India, hee hee. But uh, I would like to do a Stellaris learning stream one day. But not yet. FTL is kind of luck based. So am I. FTL is hard. Good. I mean, I saw Elira play FTL. So. Elira is pretty good at games and she's very smart when it comes to games. But I think Elira is just also very perseverant and patient, right? Um, so if Elira can play FTL and persevere and be patient, why can't I? You know? Elira is really perseverant, really patient, really lucky, really beautiful, really amazing. Her voice is great. She smells good. She's cuddly and fluffy. I think so too, Fireball. Now that I understand how orbits work, this might help me in Outer Wilds. I know, Uza. I'm so excited. We're going to make it work. So unfortunately, no more, uh, no more Kerbal Space Program this week on the stream. I had so much fun with Kerbal Space Program. I'm definitely going to bring it back. Uh, I think it might be one of those like comfort fun games where I can just kind of talk through things and hang out with you. Um, you should definitely watch Alira. You, we already like Alira. You don't need to sell it. I mean, somebody just asked me if they should watch Alira. So I'm selling her. I will sell you Alira Pandora for four and a half bottles of wine. Yeah? So yeah, tomorrow we're doing FTL. And then my goal for Friday and Saturday is to hopefully get 20 hours of video game in. If between Friday and Saturday for Outer Wilds, I can get 20 hours of Outer Wilds in, I'll be really, really happy. I would like to be done with Outer Wilds probably by next week or the one after. I'm officially putting Mass Effect on hold for a little bit. Um, I think I just want to play new games. I'll be honest. I already played Mass Effect. We already talked about it. I felt like I really was craving Mass Effect. But then as we started talking about Mass Effect, yeah, I just... um. As we started talking about Mass Effect, my desire for Mass Effect sort of kind of, yeah, it was fun. It was good to talk about Mass Effect, but I'm kind of good with it, you know, where I'm like, oh, yeah, it's fine. We talked about all our romance options. We talked about the game. We talked about the Krogan. I just want to play new stuff. Zloy, thank you so much for the four months. Thank you. Thank you. I am satisfied. My itch for Mass Effect has been itched, has been scratched. Instead, I want to play new games. And for those of you that missed it, I did a stream where I looked at your recommendations on the Steam sale and I got something like 40 games, I think. And um, I want to scratch that itch. I want to scratch that itch. The itch of Terraria soon, the itch of can she, um, can she do it? I don't know. Can she do it? I guess we'll find out. The itch of that game with the girls in the bikinis that I want to play with Pomu. The one where it's the girls in the bikinis. It's like Splatoon, but with the bikini girls. Huh? Huh? There we go. Did I get Factoria? I already had Factoria. I'm waiting to play a little bit more of Satisfactory before I... Yeah. I don't have Ultra Kill and I probably won't play it. Anyway, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you everybody for watching. I gotta go soon. I'm sorry. Um, Kotoka is playing. Is it just me? Kotoka was streaming last night. And then she was streaming Apex this morning. And now she's streaming Arc. Does this girl ever sleep? When does this girl find time for the sleep? Anyway, we are going to raid Kotoka. Um, very soon, Kotoka and I will be playing Terraria. I don't know if it's going to happen in a week or in two weeks or something like that. We might just wait for the ARC server to be closed before we do Terraria. But she said that she'd love to do it with me and both her and I... I've played Terraria once, but my friend basically backseated me through the whole thing. I don't remember anything. I didn't get anything. So with her, we are going to, yeah, hopefully get into Terraria and explore things around and, and see what's up. I hope it works out. And if it doesn't, it was a fun trial. 
Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Thank you for today. Thank you for all your help and your patience today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm super motivated to play this game more. I don't shy away from when things make my brain hurt. I just complain the way through a little bit. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't shy away from when things uh, are hard, but, you know, I definitely, unfortunately, can only fit this game one time in this schedule, but I'll play it again next week. And yeah, I'll just kind of add it in my game rotation for a little bit. And hopefully by the time Kerbal Space Program 2 comes out, I can be a professional. It was fun watching me figure things out. Good. That's what matters. As long as you had fun. I mean, I had fun, but also I kind of hope you also had fun. You know, I had fun regardless, but I hope you had fun. Uh, what else? Yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow for FDL if this is interesting to you. Otherwise, on Wednesday, we have a members only stream. And then on Friday, we got two Outer Wild streams. And Sunday, I meet some of you at Anime Impulse. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I don't have a funny voice effect. So, Space Mom, Space Mom out. So long, Space Mom. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out today. Thank you, everybody, for flying in. I hope you are all reaching mass velocity effect. I hope your Krogans and your Turians are never faster than Commander Shepard. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is looking like a great place to land. Let me tell you what, Bobby. Get the propane is what she said when she was landing her rocket. And now, my children, I am about to deliver you over onto Kotoka's stream. She is a recent debut in Niji Sanji EN. Coming in with the group known as Ex Soleil, which is funny because Soleil means sun. And we were uh, flying towards the sun in Outer Wilds the other day. This was your space mom. And I am signing off. I, your space mom, am officially signing off. As they would say. On Earth. Say yo nara, everybody. Say yo nara. Oh, hi, yo. Oh, Yasumi Nasai, everyone. Oh, Yasumi Nasai. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. And uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your night and your day. And I'm sorry that today's stream is so short. Uh, but I, I hope you had fun because I had fun. Today was such a fun stream. Bye. I'll see you all soon. Okay. I don't want to go. But I have to go. But I don't want to go. But I have to go. I'm sorry. I have to go. I'm sorry. I'm trying to touch grass. I'm trying my best to touch grass. Okay. Go say hi to Koto. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.